Hello, everyone. This is spiritual teacher, intuitive healer, Matthew John here, and welcome to my 2024 astrology preview and highest timeline activation. I am so excited to be with you and share my knowledge and my intuitive guidance from above on what might happen in 2024. And also my highest timeline activation is going to help prepare you energetically to have the best possible 2024, because truly it can be your best year yet. So let's get started. We just had a full moon that was exact on Boxing Day on the first night of Kwanzaa, uh, December 26th. And this was, you know, the full moon that puts a bow on 2023. And it was the most positive. It is, you know, we're on it right now. It is the most positive full moon of the entire year, which is pretty cool to end 2023 on such an energetically high note. Uh, it's a full moon in Cancer. But Jupiter is making uh, a very benevolent, very benevolent aspects to both the sun and the moon, a trine and a sextile. Saturn is also making a trine and a sextile to the moon. And Saturn has been very softened in Pisces. Well, we'll get into Saturn a little bit today because Saturn's got this Jekyll and Hyde um, character to it. But in this context, Saturn and Pisces being all about a spiritual, re spiritual evolution is the word. And um, very powerful dreams and prophecies that people are receiving, connections, uh, you know, communication with the other side. That's making very nice aspects to this full moon. And this full moon is also, um, it's it's happenstancing with Chiron, Chiron the Wounded Healer, which in astrology is, is known as the most important asteroid. It represents, it's, it's known as colloquially the Wounded Healer in astrology. It represents both our most wounded self, which actually comes over from other lifetimes and childhood. And it also represents our highest destiny, especially as healers. That's why it's called the wounded healer, because all healers in reality, myself, you, all of us, we come from some sort of trauma, illness, tragedy, etc. We come from woundings, right? Our healership develops from wounding. So not only is this full moon to end the year, very beneficial overall, very lucky, fortunate overall. Jupiter in Taurus is already a very fortunate aspect. It's such a close orb of the trine and the sextile to, to the full moon that it's really, really pouring in this very lucky, fortunate, prosperous, benevolent energy. It's not just about that. It's also about harnessing this good fortune energy to really step us into our healership is the word i like to use step us into our destiny as healers as light workers as service workers on this planet in fact the chiron uh chiron station which i started talking about is conjunct the north node in aries and the north node represents our soul's destiny on the earth uh, the north node on an individual level represents the direction that our soul is driving us forward on this planet. On a collective level, the North Node represents the direction that the collective is being driven forward by the by the collective oversoul. So on a personal level, this is an opportunity for us to transmute our wounds, our pain, our trauma into stepping up into being the most refined, newest, most high vibrational version of self that is going to really be stepping up the game as far as being healers and awakeners and light workers on this planet. And actually what part of the work we're going to do today is we're going to be doing a timeline activation to move you into a higher timeline to your highest possible timeline so that you're going to ride this wave of energy of good energy into 2024 and really be able to fully embrace and embody and be grounded in the true healer and the true awakener, the true activator, the true light worker, the true service worker that you can be. And the other thing about great thing about this full moon that is ending 2023 is that it's it's the matriarchy, it's the divine feminine. It's cancer. Can every time we have a, a full moon in Cancer Capricorn, it's about how do we balance the divine feminine and the divine masculine? How do we balance yin and yang? How do we balance the right brain and the left brain? How do we balance the, the matriarchy and the patriarchy? How do we balance the, um, the feminine energies in all ways that they manifest? 
and the masculine energies and all the ways that they manifest both on a personal level and on a global level right so we have the opportunity right now to really focus on the feminine aspects of life and that's for everyone man woman other and to focus on the feminine aspects you know first of all anything that helps you really feel you know uh it kind of embraced and and at home in the feminine energy so any you know for some people it's dance or some people it's singing for some people it's doing a ritual on their altar etc but not just that it's also about the feminine energies within us and the feminine energies within us are the energies of trust of intuition of flow right the right the, the left brain is we need it it's necessary to live life in human form and we could say that's capricorn the left brain is the logical mind it's like it's thinking through life okay planning out thinking and there's there's a time and a place for that capricorn season we also do need to focus on that but as soon as the can't and that's kind of been the focus since the solstice as soon as the cancer full moon hits it's like okay now we really shift our focus to the other side of that which as i said is the intuition the flow flowing through life feeling through life like one of the things i'm most proud of myself personally as, as far as my 2023 is that i've become better than in any previous year in my life of feeling through life versus thinking through life and i have found my best decisions come from feeling through life my the the most the coolest most magical experiences and this was a great year for me happen through feeling through life rather than lot there may have been some logical planning after i followed the feeling but it was feeling through life and that's cancer that's the feminine frequencies you know last year the cancer full moon occurred on the other side it occurred in january 2023 so we can think of that 2023 was really bookended actually by these cancer full moons um and it's it's meant to be that this cancer full moon this time around is actually pushing us, leading us into 2024, which we're going to talk about at length today. So I, I'm happy to talk about like my predictions for 2024 a little bit here because I find it fun. Actually, I find it interesting to try to relate the astrology and the numerology to like world events and what may happen. That being said, we need to separate that from our our world, our bubble of our world regardless of what happens in the outside world in 2024 you have the opportunity in your immediate world in your bubble of influence and in your internal world to make it literally the best year you've ever had and that's not an exaggeration and i'm not just trying to put on a rose colored glasses it, i swear this can be the absolute best year for, just like 20, there were so there was so much fear that people had coming into 2023 right about what was going to happen during 2023 pluto you know entering into aquarius for the first time is there going to be you know economic disaster uh you know is there going to be world war um are there going to be you know large scale blackouts power outages solar flares all sorts of conspiracy theories about things right well yeah there there has been a lot of war the North Node is an Aries. I said I, you know, talk a little bit about why it's more likely that the war in uh, Israel and Gaza is going to continue and probably get worse. It's it's because of the North Node in Aries, and it's because of Neptune and Pisces. So in all of 2024, we continue to have the North Node in Aries and Neptune and Pisces. Neptune and Pisces is very spiritual. It's you know opens up a portal for us to connect with the other side. Um, it, it allows us to be very artistic. It allows us to understand our past lives. We have a very active dream world. We can be doing a lot of spiritual work in our dreams. Um, we, you know, feel called to fantasy worlds and living out fantasies in, in different ways. All that being said, that's all great stuff. But the dark side of Neptune and Pisces has to do with collectives and the outer planets in general. The outer planets are Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus, and Pluto have more to do with collectives because they're generational. The inner planets move very quickly. So when you're born, your inner planets are your sun, your moon, Mercury, um, Mercury, Venus, Mars. Okay. So those planets move relatively quickly and they're more, um, you know, every, every week, uh, a lot of them are changing. 
but the outer planets jupiter and onward are generational okay you there's a whole group uh you know that when you were whenever you were born um for the months around that there was a whole group of souls that had intentionally decided to come in in the north node and whenever you were born for me it was aries actually this is a north node return for me i was born in october 86 so uh you know the people that were born around when I was born in the months around were all North Node and Aries generation. We were also all Pluto and Scorpio generation. So there's a very, um, this, this is why actually a lot of people my age are kind of in the position of being the, the young crop of spiritual leaders on the planet now is because of the astrology when we were born, Pluto in Scorpio, and which is, a, you know, Pluto in Scorpio was about spiritual revolution sexual revolution as well sexual liberation freedom um a lot of us that were born during that time are very much proponents of sexual freedom if you're gay you're gay if you're bi you're bi if you're trans you're trans you know love is love and i've always been like that and uh, that's because pluto in scorpio is about sexuality it's also about um spirituality and expanding away moving away from the religious paradigms, which the religious paradigms were more, you know, Pluto and Capricorn, which we, we you know, we're recent, which we're just exiting now, for example. Um, so uh, it's generational. And uh, we're in that North Zone and Aries and, and Pluto uh, and Neptune and Pisces period right now. So Saturn and Pisces, Neptune and Pisces and Saturn and Pisces, the downside of it is that on a collective level, it creates fanaticism, Okay. Fanatic, religious fanaticism, um, political fanaticism, et cetera, where people are become very unwilling in the in the context of groups to see other perspectives and to compromise. You know, I mean, people want a two state solution. We all want a two state solution, and uh, or most people do in the Middle East. Hamas does not. They they have they've never had any interest in having a two state solution. They've only wanted to wipe Israel off the map, right? And it's like this energy of fanaticism and you know israel has completely bucked the you know the calls of the international community to you know to change the way that they're going about the war to reduce civilian casualties to take a pause in the war israel said no you know we're doing it our way only even even saying no to the u.s right uh they the u.n passed a resolution with almost all countries signing on for a ceasefire and israel said no it's just on both sides. It's it's fanaticism, right? And now Hez Hezbollah is, is you know potentially getting involved. So there's just no um there's no uh compromise in the in the astrology right now. It's fanaticism, um, which you know makes it likely that 2024 is gonna be an even worse year of war. In 2023 was the worst year of war on the planet since the end of World War II take that in for a second, you know, with the two major wars, this one and Russia, the Ukraine, which Russia has only gotten more fanatical as well, right? Russia has only dug its heels even more. And especially now that the Ukraine is trying to join the EU, which was a shock to see that news drop. There were a lot of talks of, e of Ukraine joining NATO and Russia. Part of the reason launched this is to prevent that. But that would be even, even a step further is for Ukraine to join the EU. And there's just no end in sight. It, it's completely the West uh, versus Russia and both digging in their heels. And same with Israel and, and the, you know, the Arab nations and, and the Arab uh, uh, political and, and military outlets. And it's very likely that 2024 war will grow. Um, and it, it just it is what it is. It's in the astrology. Every time the North Node's in Aries, there's a lot of war on the planet. Jupiter was, was in Aries, and then it uh, before went into Taurus. And uh, that was the beginning stages, kind of the meat of the Russia-Ukraine war. Same, you know, looking back into history, Jupiter in Aries have launched a lot of uh, war on the planet, wars on the planet as well. Despite probably a lot of difficulties on the planet, despite also the very real possibility of a recession, on the planet as well which is a very very real possibility um there's a lot of good fortune as well and it's also going to be a very accelerated time of spiritual evolution of spiritual awakening 
because of Saturn and Neptune being in Pisces the entire year. Um, and also it's going to be a time, the, the one thing about the North Node in Aries, um, aside from all the war stuff, is about um, people, groups breaking away from religious paradigms. And like a lot of, you know, for example, in, in the U.S., this past year saw the biggest reduction in women's rights since uh, a long time, since maybe World War II, as far as like backtracking in women's rights, right? Most states now, women no longer have control over their own health care when it comes to uh, abortions, right? So um, that, had, though the corollary of that, like the side effect of that has seen more and more people that in a long time become disillusioned with religion because there's a religious undertone to that, right? So it's created, so that, you know, it's all meant to be. It's all meant to be. The Supreme Court is meant to be as it is, okay? That, you know, the backtracking on, on federal protection for abortion was meant to be as it is because the effect, the spirit, intended spiritual effect is meant to, to drive people away from religious fanaticism and tour and although it seems like it's the opposite it seems like people are getting more religiously fanatic than ever it's created a whole underground movement of people becoming just dis disillusioned with religion and moving into their own version of spirituality and that's north known in aries north known in aries about is about finding our own power on every level our own sense of who we are our own crown chakra relationship between us and and god or us and source or us and whatever right we're becoming who we are and so that's going to continue throughout 2024 i'm excited i'm very very excited for 2024 both personally and on a collective level the collective is what it is there's always going to be wars there's always going to be um tragedies and and um not always, but at least until the planet really truly ascends, there's always going to be bad things going on on the planet. But I'm excited about the taking off of spirituality in 2024 to an extent we've never seen, but at a rate we've never seen before. Um, so that's what excites me a lot. And just in my own personal life, you know, be, I'm in my North Node return right now, and I've already been experiencing more expansion over the past year in my um my career and just just being well more well known than ever before um since the north node entered aries and that's what happens whenever you have a north node return it it activates your soul purpose to an extent that you know is much stronger than uh before you enter the north node return pluto is a big part of all of this equation. 2008 to 2024 is uh, 16 years. So 16 year transit through Capricorn uh, is wrapping up uh, when Pluto uh, in January will be entering into Aquarius. It We had a preview of Pluto in Aquarius earlier this year, and it was a very interesting time. Uh, the main thing for Pluto and Aquarius, first of all, it previews the planetary age of Aquarius from a Western astrology perspective, the planetary ages, which actually move in the opposite direction due to um, due to the way that the constellations actually move in the sky. Uh, we move clockwise around the zodiac field for planetary ages. So we're moving from Pisces to Aquarius instead of Pisces to Aries. And that confused a lot of people. But 2043 is the is the consensus among most Western astrologers of when the planetary age of Aquarius actually begins. 2043. So Pluto is in Aquarius from 2024 through 2042 to 2044. It'll kind of go in and out before it fully exits. So Pluto, the, the next 20 years is the preview. The next 20 years is going to be the transition period, the true transition period on the planet from what we're used to as a planet to the new world. It Things are going to change really rapidly over the next 20 years. Pluto and Capricorn, 
2008 to 2024 was the last gasp of the beast of hyper oligarchical capitalism you know um the military industrial complex disaster capitalism pharmaceutical uh, dominance uh and um greed you know just the the greed the capitalism to its it, it, absolute worst degree of greed has been the theme i would say of 2008 to 2024 uh elon musk mr musk uh in 2004 it had a net worth of 2 billion now it's 236 billion that's 234 billion dollars that have accumulated to one person, one man on the planet. Can you imagine how many people could be fed with $234 billion? You could literally feed and end hunger on the entire planet. So that gives you a sense. It's disgusting, isn't it? That gives you a sense of what Pluto and Capricorn was about. It was about the, the 0.1%. And really, in reality, it's the point zero 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 one percent It's a handful of people that control all the wealth on the planet, almost all the wealth on the planet, getting richer and richer and richer and richer, while the middle class was has been squeezed out more and more. OK, it used to be that, uh, you know, it really wasn't that hard to buy one's first home. You know, our, my parents, right? The previous generation, you know, um, uh, my, my favorite band, one of my favorite bands is Green Day. And they just came out, came out with a new song called The American Dream is Killing Me. The American Dream is Killing Me. It's a great song, right? Um, and I heard an interview where they were talking about like the meaning of the song and Billy Joe's talking about like, yeah, you know, I grew up, you know, in, in Oakland and my parents, his parents were just, regular working class people but they were able to afford a home nowadays it's almost impossible for people of my generation especially younger than me to avoid to to be able to afford to buy a home right that's been pluto and capricorn it's completely squeezed out the middle class it sucked the lower class dry even more and more where poverty is way worse now in the lower class than it was before pluto entered capricorn it's been the the belly of the beast, Pluto and Capricorn. Aquarius, and that's because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So Saturn is hierarchical in nature. Saturn is Saturn creates a hierarchical structure where it's it's a pyramid where the top the the well it's a, it's a upright pyramid where the top is always sucking energy from the bottom. That's the nature of Capricorn. Aquarius is about equality. That's what back in the 60s, when the, the band, the fifth dimension came out with the song, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, age of Aquarius, right? The dawning of the age of Aquarius is the, the age of equality. It is the movement of that hierarchical, vampirical pyramid structure that Capricorn rules over. And this is not to say Capricorn is bad. We're in Capricorn season right now. None of this stuff is good or bad from the non-dual perspective. It all just is. It's all just different uh, experiences for collectives to have. And it's just different experiences based on whatever epic or age we're in at, on the planet at any given time. There's nothing inherently wrong with it, right? But from a planetary perspective, we will be moving from that age of uh, Capricorn, Pluto and Capricorn, to Pluto and Aquarius, which is the age of equality. We are in the entering into the golden age. Okay, there were several, you know, major markers. You know, 1986, the harmonic convergence. Our solar system. Imagine this is the center of the galaxy. This is our solar system. Okay, every thirteen thousand years, we move a little bit closer and we start to pass the center of the galaxy and the center of the galaxy emanates this light out and we enter into an age of enlightenment who knows what was the 
what was going on on the planet during the last age of enlightenment 13,000 years ago? 13,000, 12,000, 11,000 years ago. What was going on? I've taught about it at length. Lemuria and Atlantis. Before the war in Lemuria and Atlantis, there was an age of enlightenment on the planet. And at, at their peaks, both Lemuria and Atlantis were extremely well run, um, well, uh, very spiritual, very pleasant, very enlightened societies. Both were, even Atlantis. And then towards the end, the, what happened, astrologically speaking, as the planet started, as the solar system started to exit the photon belt, which in uh, Hinduism, it's called the Kali Yuga, the Kali Yuga, that's when the wars happen and we fell from the Age of Enlightenment back into the Age of Darkness for the next 12,000 years until now, when we've come all the way back around to the other side, Okay, it's a 26,000 year cycle. This is the center of the galaxy. This is the solar system. It's a 26,000 year cycle. So every 13,000 years during the ages of Leo and Aquarius, and every time we get slightly closer to the galactic center as well, it's a spiral. Okay, so we're coming back. This was Lemuria Atlantis. Now we're coming back around to the other side, and we're right at the edge. We're stepping, dipping our toes into that age of enlightenment. Into the uh, into the photon belt, the harmonic convergence of 1986. That was the first dipping of the toes. We could say our first entrance of the solar system into the photon belt. Since then, we've gone further and further. Another big, um, momentous you know period on the planet was 98 through 2001. The Y2K craze was the probably Illuminati generated fear program in order to direct people's attention away from the spiritual um the spiritual spiritually enlightening uh growth uh, evolution entrance portal that was happening during that time right but uh in reality of course y2k was a fugazi an illusion and it was a very awakening portal 2012 Again, the fear that was created around that, that's the deception. The reality of it was that was a, a the next doorway. Imagine it's like the harmonic convergence was the first doorway, and then the next doorway was was the millennium, the, the turn of the millennium. The next doorway was, was 2012. The next story was 2020. What did the Illuminati bring to us 2020? They brought us a pandemic, right? Again, to move people's attention away from the spiritual doorway and into fear. OK, so this is we we every time we've entered into a new doorway, astrologically speaking and astronomically speaking, our solar system is entering deeper and deeper into the photon belt by 20 by the 2040s. We're going to be completely immersed in it. OK, so the next 2000 years, every every astrological age is 2160 years. It is it has to be an age of enlightenment because of our entrance into the photon belt. And as we get, we're, as we're closer to the galactic center and receiving more of the photonic energy, the photonic energy equates to spiritually, spiritual enlightenment, spiritual evolution. Okay. So yeah, it's, it's by design and it, it can't not occur. So this Pluto in Aquarius time from 2024 through 2044 this is the preview of it and this is the transition period so one way or another we're going to move from elon musk oh you know being wealthier than most nations right to an age of economic equality around the planet how does that happen in practice i have no clue that's the exciting part but astrologically speaking that has to happen over the next 20 years which is incredibly exciting. The other thing that has to happen is true first contact with extraterrestrials because the other thing about the age of Aquarius is equality of the earth in the galactic community. The earth no longer being, um, the earth no longer being ostracized, so to speak, because we're at such a low vibration or a low density from the rest of the galactic community, that the earth actually being a part of a true galactic community so true first contact, I mean, most of the world now is aware that aliens are real, 
that was the first step. The first step's already the check checked off. The next step is true integration where the extraterrestrials are actually like literally a part of Congress, like congressional hearings and there's Pleiadians on, on stage and, you know, speaking about what goes on on their planet and it's going to happen. Okay. Mark my words, Pleiadians will be in Congress very soon, maybe before the end of the decade, probably in the 2030s exciting times exciting times and you know the other thing about pluto and aquarius is it's the takeoff of the technological revolution the ai revolution okay technology is going to get so good and it already is ai is going to get so creepily good over the next couple of years where like right now they have these deep fakes you know where you can just uh, for free, like create a deep fake video of anyone. And, you know, they're pretty funny. You know, people people have like uh, Biden and Trump and Obama like playing like FIFA 24. <laughs> it's like it, it, they make for funny videos, um, but it's going to get really, really creepily accurate where, you know, at some point you might not be able to tell the difference between deep fakes and, uh, and, and real people anymore. Um, you know, that's going to be a big concern is copyrights and privacy. There's already been some landmark um, lawsuits uh, from some Hollywood people about protecting their artwork from AI. And uh, those sort of legal questions are going to come up more and more. Um, gas cars will be a thing of the past very soon. Okay. Uh, everything will be electric and eventually everything will move on from being electric to being scalar. Everything will be run on completely clean energy that burns nothing. And we have to, because if not, uh, you know, the planet is warming so quickly. I posted about this on Instagram and YouTube and whatever, just a graph of how quickly winters have warmed since the 70s. It's four, five, six, seven degrees Fahrenheit in the Northeast. It, it's not the same anymore. You know, when I grew up, the ponds would be frozen. I grew up playing hockey. We would we would skate all winter long on the ponds. Nowadays, you you can't skate on ponds anymore up here. It's not cold enough. It's too warm. I used to build a hockey rink when I was in high school in my backyard every winter. There would be no point in building a hockey rink up here anymore. It's just too warm. It used to snow. You would not believe. 120 inches, 130 inches a year. The last five to seven years, especially, it doesn't snow that much anymore. <laughs> this winter, we've had two inches of snow, I think, the whole year. It just, it's changing. It, you, you won't notice it as much if you're in the lower states. You won't notice much of a change. It's up here and, and north. You, people are, we're noticing it. If you live in the north, you're noticing how different the winters are becoming at a really rapid rate and it's scary right but we're gonna i just i i do see us as a planet abating that where it's gonna get worse and worse over the next 10 years and there will be a point in the 2030s and 2040s where there's no more fossil fuel burning at all and we've moved on to not just electric but actual actual scalar technology which is what we did in atlantis in atlantis and lemuria we didn't burn any fossil fuels, right? We were way past that. We use scalar technology. Nikola Tesla, Tesla, you know, create scalar technology has been around. It's just been suppressed by corporations because the you know oil, oil and gas make more money than anything on the planet. So the 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 beast, the system will keep pushing that forward until there's no oil left on the planet to be to be taken and from then okay it'll be like well now we have to move into other technologies right so the it's you know the it's two sides of a coin on one side it's going to get worse climate change global warming uh natural disasters will get worse on the other side the worse it gets the more it'll wake up the world to moving from the archaic 
can you imagine being an extraterrestrial coming to earth and l l seeing like that we're driving around in these like beat up 1994 honda civics burning toxic gasoline made from oil that we had to destroy fret you know um what do they call it uh, frac fracking you had to literally like ex blow up the earth with explosives to get it out and it's toxic to all life <laughs> like what can you imagine being an extraterrestrial coming to this planet and seeing that you'd be like yeah i'm getting out of here right <laughs> this planet's fucked up no but they 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 see us with a lot of compassion they want to help us change things right uh, but the next 20 years will be the move from the archaic technologies to the technologies of the new earth, which will be completely clean and very much everything's going to be run by AI, whether you like it or not. Now, you don't have to participate in any of this. Like you can keep your gasoline cars. You can, um, you know, resist uh, some of the AI technologies. You can stay off social media, but it's going to become harder and harder because you'll be more and more ostracized from society. But that's where it's like this whole emerge reemergence of new Atlantis and the new Lemuria is happening where a lot of us are going to be more interested from a soul level and from a personal level in participating in new Atlantis, which is diving into all the technology and becoming a part of the technology. Some people, some light workers even will get microchipped when, when microchips become available and let's hope not mandatory in, in some places, but I wouldn't be surprised. That'll be a thing to come in Pluto and Aquarius. I won't be getting one, I'll tell you that. And I, I'm sure a lot of you are on board with me. Um, but some light workers will want to just be a part of the new technology. And that's like New Atlantis. A lot of light workers will resist and form these communities that are outside of major cities that are out in nature. And, you know, it's a more Pleiadian and Lemurian way of living, community farming, community education. Uh, community living it's a very 11th house aquarian sort of uh structure astrologically speaking right and a lot and a, the, the majority of us will kind of fall in between and experience a blend of lemuria new lemuria and new atlantis and that's probably where i'll be back in 1968-69 we also had um a jupiter and uranus conjunction okay and that's something that is going to repeat in 2024 on Earth Day, April 20th, 2024, we're going to have a Jupiter-Uranus conjunction where uh, they're going to meet in Taurus, which is earthy. Taurus is, is about the environment, right? But Uranus is about revolution, and it's about technology, okay? It is the ruler of Aquarius. It's also about egalitarianism. Um, what is, you know, just and fair for all? How can collectives all work together as one how can collectives all join together as one you know um like the hippie kumbaya vibe of the 60s right so 1968-69 on a technological um in a, the technological sphere we had we had the moon landings we had the first apollo moon landings right at least we think did we really i don't know <laughs> supposedly some people say stanley kubrick on his deathbed you know confessed that they were filmed in a hollywood studio and the Red Hot Chili Peppers song, right? You know, space might be the final frontier, but it's filmed in a Hollywood basement, right? I don't know. I don't know. Je ne sais pas. But um, regardless, it was, whether it was real or not, it was kind of this um, exposition of technological revolution, right? Which coincided with, uh, with Jupiter and Uranus. So, but not only that, this was the peak of the anti-Vietnam uh, protests, 1968-69, right? This is when, you know, everyone, my parents, et cetera, were like, fuck school, fuck college, fuck nine to five jobs, fuck all of this, you know, uh, let's just go drop acid and just, you know, live as one because this world, you know, Nixon, fuck Nixon, fuck all this war, right? Let's, let's, it, that was the Aquarian vibe. And that coincided with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction. So not only that, we have Pluto in Aquarius entering into Aquarius where it will be for the next 20 years, right? And that happens on January 21st. So we're only four weeks away. Um, not even four weeks away. And uh, that Jupiter in, in, in Uranus conjunction coinciding with Pluto and Aquarius is it's 
the doorway. It's we're we're in 2024. We open the door, and we take our first step as a collective into the Aquarian age, into the age of Aquarius. That's this is what it means. Jupiter gives life, gives growth to whatever it comes into conjunction with. Okay, it's coming into conjunction with Uranus, which is the ruler of Aquarius. It's giving life. It's it's like taking a lighter and lighting the candle that is the age of Aquarius, okay? We may be in the shadow, kind of in, in the intermediary between Pisces and Aquarius. Again, the age of Pisces on the planet has been marked by stark duality, contrast, factions, right? Dualistic factions that can't seem to get along with each other. Whereas as we step into the planetary age of Aquarius, it's about equality and living as one collective. And as a corollary, we will see uh vibrationally speaking our collective raise notch very slowly at first but then it'll take off more it uh spiritual evolution is logarithmic by the way okay it starts very slow and then it it, it picks up speed it's not like that it's like this and as a collective we got to get through the the really the muck we got to get through the 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 tough shit first of all of the wars on this planet that the 2020s, I'm just going to be honest with you, are very likely going to be marked by world war, okay? Um, and we're already at the beginning of it. It, it started with Russia, Ukraine, now, you know, Israel and, and the Arab nations. And over the next couple of years, we're going to probably see nonstop conflict in the Middle East, in Russia, and in other areas of the, of, of the planet and in Europe as well. And it just is what it is. It, it, and I don't, I don't want to just say every, anything to have for sure. It's just what I've been shown. It's what the Syrians have told me. It's what I've seen. It's what the astrology tells the story of. Okay. Uranus and Gemini. Uranus moves into Gemini in 2025. Uranus and Gemini coincided with the the um with the American Revolution, with the French Revolution. The other thing about you know this whole idea of revolution, okay, when it comes to um to you know this Aquarian energy, we saw, you know, uh 1775 and, and 1778. I just mentioned the uh, the American Revolution and the French Revolution, right? We also did see that uh, Jupiter-Uranus uh, conjunction happen as well. Again, Jupiter giving life to that that idealistic and that revolutionary energy of Aquarius. So how does that actually manifest on the planet? Well, it's likely going to be over the next couple of years, a lot of revolutions. Like Peru just had a revolution that was squashed, you know, um, last year. And a lot of countries around the world are going to see some sort of revolution, overthrows of power, okay, potentially dictators getting overthrown around the world. Um, in general, in every country, even the Western countries, which see relative stability, you know, I mean, as crazy as the politics are in the United States, it's a lot more stable than in other countries. Um, there will be lots of this rhetoric and this groupthink that will be like, oh, we're done with being controlled by the we're done with the rules for for me, not for thee. We're done with this just sense of, um, you know, us being the proletariat and just you guys can do whatever you want, right? And as a corollary to that, we'll see more and more suppression of information, okay? That's another thing about when uh, Uranus enters into Gemini in 2025. Do you think censorship is bad right now on YouTube? And it is bad, right? It's going to get worse. It's going to get way worse in 2024 leading into 2025 so it's these two you know everything is um a reflection of everything else but there's gonna be a lot of this revolutionary energy um uranus has been retrograde in taurus uh uranus and retrograde in taurus and jupiter and taurus coming together it, it's like going back to the good old days of the stock market where uh this has been the best year for the stock market it's been the best year economically in the united states with every marker unemployment quelling of uh, prices of inflation like we're literally in november prices were lower than in october uh so all the fear which you know a lot of it came from the right wing in the united states that just doesn't like the left wing it, the the economy in the united states has been better in 2023 than in a very long time with all the numbers now i understand on the streets it doesn't always uh practically work out for people that are in the lower class i just talked about how the whole system has been designed to vacuum wealth from the lower class and the upper class and the democrats and republicans are no different both democrats and republicans this they they keep perpetuate the system that does that but 
it has been the best economic year in a very long time in the United States. Astrologically speaking, that's Taurus. Taurus is good fortune. And Uranus and Taurus retrograde was returned to the good old days. Jupiter retrograde and Taurus returned to the good old days. Now, Jupiter is exiting its retrograde December 30th. Uranus is exiting its retrograde January 27th. Does that mean February, March, we see a reversal? It's quite possible. It's quite possible that the whole good old days energy of everyone making money off of the, you know, the S&P and the Dow making new highs every single day and just insane growth in tech stocks and just, you know, people that have money, just making money, printing money to themselves like crazy. That may reverse next year. Uh, the housing market, you know, being at, at it still, although it's less than 2021, it's better than 2022. It, the housing market has been incredible as well. That may reverse. We may see reversals in the economic indicators starting in 2024, although it may be delayed because if we're in an election year in the United States. And generally during an election year, the administration will do whatever it can to prop things up in order to, you know, to get reelected. And then it can get worse sometimes after the election. But we shall see. And that being said, just because things have been really good in the United States it, economically, it doesn't mean it's been in the rest of the world. And I completely acknowledge that. Um, I'm just talking about from a U.S. perspective. I have not looked at the economic numbers in the EU or in uh, other countries. Now, this is an eight year in numerology. An eight year is a year of abundance. Eight in numerology is abundance, success, power. It's about reaching the pinnacle of something. It's like the chariot card in the tarot. So by default, this year is going to be a year of good fortune if you can take advantage of and harness those energies. So don't fall into the lower timelines of fear, despite of fear and victimhood, despite whatever ends up happening in the outside world, whether it's war, recession, et cetera and stay in the highest timeline of optimism, and that will put you in alignment with that eight vibration. The downside of an eight year, though, is the power aspect of it. And it's not just the positive aspects of power, it's also the misuse of power. So again, to go along with the North Node in Aries and Neptune and, and Neptune and Saturn in Pisces, those that idea of fanaticism, of, of groups digging in their heels or some groups wanting to take power over other groups will likely be a part of our planetary experience in 2024. Okay, so let's go over the more specific month-by-month -month astrology. So this is from astrology.com, and the link to this article is in the description box below. So starting off January 1st, maybe you're watching it on New Year's Day, January 1st, Mercury goes direct in Sagittarius. So Mercury has been retrograde since... December 12th, 2023, and it stations direct on January 1st, 2024. Now, remember, when a planet goes direct the day of, it doesn't mean its influence disappears. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Its influence is actually much enhanced when it's in its station phases, whether it's stationing retrograde or stationing direct. So on January 1st and the days around it, it's the week before and after each station phase that a planet will be most exalted or have its most influence. So from December 24th, all the way through January 8th, it's going to feel most like Mercury retrograde. So you're still going to be having problems with your electronics, with miscommunications with people, hearing and talking to people from the past, so on and so forth. So follow the Mercury retrograde rules if you can until January 8th, or ideally if you truly want to be safe through uh, about January 15th. Also on New Year's Day, uh, Venus and Sag, squares Saturn in Pisces. We can be feeling very flirty and imaginative with this uh, with this aspect here. January 4th, Mars will enter Capricorn. So Mars has been in Sagittarius. It's been making us feel very energetic, wanting to move our bodies a lot. When Mars goes into Capricorn, we slow down a bit and we'll feel more of a sense of wanting to be still and to work on our health. So when Mars goes into Capricorn, joining the sun in Capricorn, it's a great time to whether you want to start a juicing protocol or whether you want to start taking new supplements or you go for acupuncture, massages, et cetera. That's January is a great month to do that. January night, the sun trines Uranus in Taurus. That can help us to have good fortune with finances. It's a good time if you're making any big financial decisions. 
especially because we're out of that, uh, the main shadow part of the post retrograde period for Mercury, January 9th uh, and the days after. Great time for financial matters. New Moon in Capricorn comes on January 11th. Make sure you are subscribed to the Higher Self channel because that's where you can find every single one of my new and full moon podcasts. January 12th, Mars and Capricorn trines Jupiter and Taurus. Again, uh, a very fortunate, especially for finances aspect. January 13th, Mercury will enter Capricorn. It's going to be a really good time, again, for health and finances, and especially now in the second half of January with Mercury, Mars, and the Sun all in Capricorn. January 15th, the Sun in Capricorn sextiles Neptune in Pisces. It's a very fun um service oriented type uh aspect january 18th mercury and capricorn sextile saturn and pisces we're finding creative solutions january 19th venus and sag squares neptune and pisces we're feeling dreamy fantasies fantasies are coming up sexual fantasies things like that um but also people can feel can be irrationally reactive Mercury and Capricorn on the 19th also trines Jupiter in Taurus. So once again, a very fortunate and lucky time, especially for finances and job and career matters. January 20th, the Sun and Pluto join together on Pluto's grand entrance into Aquarius, which I think is so interesting because it's as if the Sun is illuminating and lighting up Pluto and really showing us uh, uh, how important Pluto's entrance is into Aquarius. It's lighting it up. It's bringing light to the world. So January 20th, it's a, it's the most momentous day of the, the year from an astrological standpoint. The sun and Pluto both enter Aquarius. January 23rd, Venus will enter Capricorn. We'll move from feeling very flirtatious and wanting to go on a lot of dates to feeling more practical and a lot of times introverted in matters of romance. January 25th is a exciting full moon in Leo, though. And that's kind of the opposite energy because we're going to really then want to express ourselves and have some fun, be social. January 26th, Uranus stations direct in Taurus. So Uranus, again, the two biggest aspects this year are uh, Jupiter and Uranus uh, conjunct in April and um, the Pluto transit. So it's interesting that also you, that Uranus is stationed essentially on Pluto's um, entrance into Aquarius. Because Uranus is, since it's a slow moving outer planet, it's going to be exalted and moving very slowly for a couple of weeks around its station direct phase, which is uh, January 26th. So Uranus will go back direct. Now, with Uranus going back direct, um, after uh, all of the fortunate, it, it's I, I, I see January as being a very fortunate time in money and, and economics in general. We'll probably see new all time highs. In the stock markets in the U.S., the Dow and the Nasdaq and uh, the S&P. But after Uranus goes back direct, ironically enough, we may the the good fortune might wane because the way I've seen Uranus and Jupiter retrograde in Taurus in the second half of 2023 has been like the return to the good old days of like the 1980s of just of silliness on Wall Street, just silly games, right? Um, and just everything, no matter what you buy it it goes up right that could shift after um uranus goes back direct and we could that could be kind of the beginning of the end for this just uh parabolic stock market run that we've been on january 26 the sun in aquarius squares jupiter and taurus and that's also interesting again you know financially speaking that square rather we've had conjunctions uh up until now it, that would have been very fortunate, but this might be, you know, again, the beginning of the end for the super stupid bullish uh, stock market, right? January 27th, Mercury and Mars can join in Capricorn. Um, so it's going to be a, a very grounded, earthy time, great time to, to go out in nature, to connect with your animal companions. And also you're going to just feel like wanting to get things done, wanting to, you know, um, be wanting to work hard. Capricorn is the uh, quintessential hard worker of the zodiac january 27th venus and capricorn sextile saturn in pisces so we're really going to want to be thinking of relationship romantic relationships from a long-term perspective around that time mercury and capricorn on january 28th trines uranus and taurus um so again because uranus is uh with uranus 
exalted and stational. You know, Uranus is the planet of, of freedom and and from a very Capricorn-esque and financial standpoint, it's about entrepreneurship. So it's a good time, especially if you're an entrepreneur or you're someone that, you know, is in charge of your business around January 28th should be a fortunate time. Um, also Venus and Capricorn as well, a trining Jupiter. Again, good fortune for you in business and also a, a steady and kind of um, stable time for romantic partnerships. And January 29th, Mars and Capricorn trines Uranus and Taurus as well. So uh, much of the same, good energy and cautious yet optimistic energy. Okay, Groundhog Day, February 2nd, uh, Mercury and Capricorn, Sex House, Neptune and Pisces. So with that, we'll kind of have this push pull between being grounded and also like exploring the dream and the intuitive worlds. February 4th, Mercury enters Aquarius. Um, and that really, we're going to be wanting to connect with each other, especially over the internet and in groups, in person as well. And really, we're just going to want to experience the best for everyone and really, you know, feel very heart-centered. Uh, February 5th, Mercury and Aquarius conjuncts Pluto and Aquarius, really amplifying that exalted Pluto and Aquarius energy. We're going to want to have discussions and, and our thoughts are going to be with how can we transform the world towards the age of Aquarius. February 8th, the sun in Aquarius squares Uranus and Taurus. We're going to be feeling that sense of revolution, that feeling of revolution. What do we want to evolve and push forward and revolutionize on the planet and in, in our own lives, especially with the new moon in Aquarius happening the, the day after. February 10th, Mercury in Aquarius squares Jupiter in Taurus. We're going to really want to kind of push forward and be innovative with things, but we might need resistance with that. Um, Mar February 12th, Mars enters Aquarius. So we're going to be moving from very health centered Capricorn to more idealistic, you know, revolutionary energy, Mars and Aquarius. We're going to, and we're going to want to meet with others and be with others and also be on the internet a lot because Aquarius of course rules over technology. Uh, Venus and Capricorn, sextiles Neptune and Pisces on February 13th. That's on, on Valentine's Day. Um, so that's a really nice aspect for Valentine's Day. Very romantic, very long-term relationship oriented. And also on that day, uh, Mars and Pluto are conjunct. So it's like we're just feeling dreamy and optimistic about anything that's futuristic. And a lot of we're going to want to really, you know, spend a lot of time online. Uh, Venus enters Aquarius on February 16th. So so we're going to even go more into this uh, place of wanting the best for everyone and this kumbaya type energy. Uh, February 16th, Mercury and Aquarius squares Uranus and Taurus. Uh, we can have a bit of uh, miscommunications. Uh, February 17th, Venus and Aquarius conjuncts Pluto in Aquarius. February 17th, Venus and Aquarius conjuncts Pluto in Aquarius. So that really, really amplifies that uh, Aquarian energy even more. Sun enters Pisces on February 18th. Pisces season is very creative, very intuitive. Um, it's the end of the astrological year. Uh, February 21st, Venus and Aquarius conjuncts Mars and Aquarius. Very, again, very dreamy, revolutionary type energy, optimistic energy. February 22nd, Mercury enters Pisces. Um going to be a very creative and artistic time. Full moon in Virgo, February 24th. And after that, we want to kind of get things done practically. We can get a bit obsessive about things as well. On that day, also Venus, Aquarius, squares, Jupiter, and Taurus. So we could get a little too serious or, or hard-headed about things. February 27th, Mars, Aquarius, squares, Jupiter, and Taurus. Um, feeling very idealistic, but again, could meet resistance. February 28th, Sun and Pisces conjuncts, Mercury and Pisces. Super intuitive, creative, and spiritual. Uh, and Saturn as well is is there. And then February 29th, Mercury and Pisces sextiles Jupiter in Taurus. So it's a very good time to get out in nature and also work with art in any way. March 1st, Sun and Pisces sextiles Jupiter in Taurus. And we're really going to be feeling, again, super connected with nature and spirit and creativity. March 3rd, Venus Aquarius squares Uranus in Taurus. Um, we can you know, can have some relationship issues if we're not careful, if we're being too hyper-individualistic. March 4th, Mercury and Pisces sextiles Uranus and Taurus, a very creative and artistic energy. March 8th, Mercury and Pisces conjuncts Neptune and Pisces. Uh, again, very, very creative and fantasy and spirit-oriented. 
March 9th, Mars and Aquarius squares uh, Uranus and Taurus. Uh, and also the Sun sextiles Uranus and Taurus. Uh, that's a typo from this website, by the way. Uh, that's just say Taurus. Um, but we'll be feeling very creative, wanting to find very creative solutions. March 9th, Mercury enters Aries. So we move to, we move in March to really want to do embrace our individuality in all ways and speak, you know, without filters. Uh, March 10th, we have a new moon in Pisces. And after that time, it's very creative. And it's an interesting juxtaposition with Mercury and Aries and uh, Pisces, uh, the uh, new moon, because we can both be feeling introverted and like really like we need to say something at the same time. But both um, are really oriented around the throat chakra. Uh, March 10th, Mercury and Aries sextiles Pluto in Aquarius. So we're going to be really wanting to um, speak up for what we feel is right. March 11th, Venus enters Pisces. Venus and Pisces is a really artistic, creative, um, flowy time. Uh, we feel very flowy and uh, want to have fun and explore fantasies and relationships. March 17th, Sun and Pisces conjuncts Neptune and Pisces. So we're really feeling that uh, that Piscean energy because you know Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. March 19th uh, is the spring equinox. Sun enters Aries, the astrological new year, Osara. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, that'll be the half the astrological new year, and we start the wheel all over again. So, um, that's a great time to do some uh ceremonies. Join ascending as one, do the uh, uh, vernal equinox ceremony with us. And by the way, at the end, I'll tell you all about ascending as one, so stay tuned. March 21st, Sun and Aries sextiles Pluto in Aquarius, so we're really going to fe be feeling a sense of personal power. Venus and Pisces also on that day conjunct Saturn and Pisces. So again, really, really strong Piscean energy um, all around the world. And with the Aries influx as well, this could be a troublesome time potentially for war. March 22nd, Mars enters Pisces. And we will be wanting to make art and, and express our spirituality in creative ways. March 24th, Venus and Pisces sextiles Jupiter in Taurus. And we're going to be feeling uh, very... Again, flowy, uninhibited, um, and also very wanting to connect with the Earth a lot as well. Okay, we have our first eclipse on March 25th. That will be a full moon lunar eclipse in Libra. And uh, this is a Libra and Aries eclipse season. So this will be a south node eclipse where we'll be uh, working on letting go of a lot of baggage from the past, especially as to do with relationships. The work we started on that this October will uh, kind of, finish up in a lot of ways on that March 25th eclipse. March 28th, Venus in Pisces, sex house, Uranus in Taurus. We're going to be feeling um, kind of un, ungrounded, perhaps very, maybe too idealistic, too much going with the flow, but a lot of cool creative innovations are going to be downloaded to people around this time. Okay, uh, April 1st is when Mercury goes retrograde in Aries. So the shadow phase, uh, the retrograde shadow phase will be March 25th through April 8th. And then uh, again, when it stations direct, it will be from April 18th through uh, May 2nd. April 4th, Venus enters Aries and all of a sudden people go from just feeling a bit kind of like ungrounded and go with the flow to like really, you know, aggressive and, and going after what they want in life and, and, they're, you know, wanting to hustle and make money and being very flir flir very flirtatious and sexual and romantic. Uh, and Venus sextiles uh, right after its entrance on April 6th, Pluto and Aquarius. So we're really feeling empowered. Now, April 8th is the really, is one of the other highlights of the year. That's the newest, that's the 2024 edition of the Great American Eclipse, where we have a, where we have a total solar eclipse across the United States. I'm lucky to be in the uh, zone of totality this time around. So um, I'm going to go outside my backyard and uh, be able to see it right overhead. So uh, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I might go to the beach uh, to see it, or I'm not even sure. Family might, uh, family and friends might come up as well. But um, that's going to be really exciting. Now, what I really received, that eclipse as it moves across with it being in Aries, it's really pulling up all this, um, this stuck energy in the grids of, pain and war that is from the past including of including from indigenous peoples because 
we're entering into a period for the United States where the United States is having a lot of its returns where, you know, for example, Uranus and Gemini and uh, the Jupiter and Uranus conjunction and, and Jupiter and Gemini as well. These are aspects that we saw during 1776, 1777, during the American Revolution. And it's interesting how, you know, with this 2024 election coming up, which is likely to be a shit show, um, you know, it, it's similar energies to, uh, it's similar astrological energies to the American Re Revolution. And from an astrology standpoint, this is a North Node eclipse in Aries. This is about finding who we are as light workers, service workers, as souls that are leading the spiritual evolution of the planet. This is about finding our own way. And a lot of romantic relationships could have some big problems during this March, April period because of having to clear out the Libra energy and then move forward so strongly with the Aries energy. April 10th, Mars and Saturn conjunct in Pisces. Okay, very uh, intuitive, uh, creative energy. April 11th, Sun uh, and Mercury conjunct in Aries, really amplifying that I'm going to say whatever I'm going to say energy. Uh, April 19th, Mercury in Aries conjuncts Venus in Aries. And April 19th, Mercury and Venus conjunct in Aries. Very flirty, you know, fun kind of energy. Sun enters Taurus. Okay, Sun enters Taurus on April 19th. Taurus season is so fun. It's earthy, grounded, perfect for springtime. Uh, April 19th, Mars in Pisces, sextiles, Uranus in Taurus. So, um, you know, really wanting to uh, be creative, find creative solutions. April 20th, that's that big Jupiter and Uranus uh, conjunction that I talked about. Um, such an innovative time, exciting. So many cool inventions and AI things and, uh, and are going to come out around this time. And also so many uh, just amazing technologies that are so crucial to the new earth are going to be downloaded uh, through people at that time as well. Um, April 21st, uh, the sun squares Pluto. So it's interesting that on that uh, conjunction, pretty much on that conjunction day, uh, the sun is also squaring Pluto as like this, you know, this squares are, are contentious and, and they're, you know, planets that aren't getting along, but they're also planets that are pushing each other, right? That, that's what a square is. It's an angle. It's a sharp angle. So it's as if, um, it's as if the sun and Pl Pl it's as if Pluto is pushing the sun and pushing uh, Jupiter with it forward and uh, Uranus and pushing Jupiter and Uranus forward with it saying, all right, let's get the ball rolling so we can actually create the new earth and all the technology that is a part of it. April 23rd, full moon and spooky Scorpio. I love that. So I'll be feeling uh, wanting. So we'll be wanting to investigate and get to the bottom of things. And feeling very sexual and emotional as well. Uh, Mercury goes direct, as I uh, mentioned, on April 25th. So, but the shadow will last and through last until about May 2nd. Mars and Neptune conjunct on April 28th. So, very creative and optimistic time, uh, but also can be fanatical time. Again, you know, war being a potential uh, big topic in 2024. Venus enters Taurus. Venus is a home in Taurus. April 29th and through May. Will be uh, wanting to spend money, travel, and really connect with animals and plants and and the natural world in, in all ways. Mars enters Aries on April thirtieth. North nodes in Aries, and we, we're going to be feel be feeling very aggressive, and also the world could get very aggressive in May as well. April thirtieth, Venus and Taurus squares Pluto and Aquarius. This in, innovative energy is there around environmental matters, switching to clean energies. All right, now. Pluto does have a retrograde again in 2024. It begins technically May 2nd, but we're going to be feeling the shadow phase of it from about uh, mid-April through mid-May. And when Pluto's going retrograde, we could be feeling this backtracking type energy like, oh, we just, you know, made these steps forward into all these innovative things. And even in our own lives, now we're kind of taking a step back for a bit. And Pluto will retrograde back into Capricorn, by the way, uh, for a little bit in um in may and in uh 2024 and we could be you know again feeling like we're going backwards again as a planet or even in our own lives then uh may 3rd marginary sextiles pluto in aquarius we're going to be really feeling super determined and uh wanting to we're really feeling in our power may 7th uh, the sun and taurus sextiles saturn in pisces that's a very nice energy especially for uh business for and for, especially for any creative matters 
and for anything involving animals and plants and uh, nature. New moon in Taurus on May 7th, after the new moon in Taurus, again, we'll be feeling super connected to nature, springtime, you know, tend your gardens. May 13th, sun and uh, sun conjuncts Uranus and Taurus, amplifying Uranus again. And it's a very, very freedom oriented, creative and innovative energy. May 13th as well, Venus and Taurus, sextile Saturn in Pisces, very romantic type energy. Mercury enters Taurus May 15th. And as uh, Mercury uh, goes into Taurus, we really can become a bit stubborn, but also, again, wanting to really connect with the natural world a lot. Uh, May 17th, Mercury in Taurus squares Pluto in Aquarius. Uh, we could be feeling uh, like it's all or nothing in, in, if we're not careful. May 18th, Venus conjuncts Uranus in Taurus. Again, feeling very connected with nature, plants, animals, and feeling grounded uh, uh, and kind of knowing who we want to become. And at the same time, Sun and uh, Jupiter are conjunct in Taurus as well. So ditto for all that. Also, it's a good time, again, for finances. Uh, May 19th, the Sun and Taurus sextiles Neptune in Pisces. Very imaginative and intuitive. Sun enters Gemini May 20th. Gemini season is about all things literature and language and wanting to connect with cities, art galleries, cafes, social hierarchies, etc. Um, Sun and Gemini trines Pluto and Aquarius. So we're really going to be feeling... Uh, like we can get a million things done at once, very much in our power. May 23rd, Venus conjuncts Jupiter in Taurus. Um, so we're really going to be feeling very grounded then. Uh, Venus and uh, and Jupiter sextile Neptune and Pisces. And it's a very, uh, on that day as well, great time to find any creative solutions, any issues in our lives. Uh, May 23rd, full moon in Sagittarius. We'll be feeling very adventurous, great time to travel. And also Venus enters Gemini on the same day. When Venus goes into Gemini, we want to be everywhere at once. And uh, we can't decide who we want to be with romantically sometimes. Uh, May 23rd, Jupiter in Taurus sextiles Neptune in Pisces. May 23rd, Jupiter's last day in Taurus. It sextiles Neptune in Pisces as it makes the transition. And it's, uh, it's a very fortunate uh, exit. Venus in Gemini trines Pluto in Aquarius. We're going to be feeling very flirtatious and wanting to explore, again, cities and social situations. Jupiter enters Gemini, May 25th. And when Jupiter enters Gemini for the rest of the year, things are going to, we're going to see all sorts of innovations in specifically AI, specifically on internet platforms like social media stuff. Um, all sorts of stuff is likely to change. Uh, with meta and youtube and other platforms a lot of new platforms censorship free platforms will pop up or the ones that already exist will get more popular uh with jupiter being in gemini last time jupiter was in gemini was 2012 uh when we were experiencing you know the end of the mayan calendar and a lot of people were spiritually awakening a lot of people were traveling it's a very artistic time it's a very uh it's 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 a time to explore, learn new skills, especially anything creative. May twenty seventh, Mercury and Taurus sextile Saturn in Pisces. So it could be a fortunate time for business decisions, things like that. May thirtieth, Mercury and Uranus conjunct in Taurus. So we're going to be feeling optimistic and expressing ourselves optimistically. June second, Jupiter now in Gemini trines Pluto and Aquarius. This is like an energy of just like kumbaya, good feelings, innovation. Let's bring forth the new Earth. Uh, I, I believe I'll be at the Contact in the Desert um, conference then. June 2nd, Mercury and Taurus, sextiles Neptune and Pisces. Um, very creative and also, you know, very earthy. Again, uh, nature, nature oriented. Um, June 3rd, Mercury enters Gemini. So now we move to wanting to multitask and be everywhere at once and be in cities and have fun. Uh, it'll be trining Pluto and Aquarius. Again, innovation. Uh, finding, you know, learning new skills. And also Mercury conjuncts Jupiter there as well. So it amplifies even what I just said. And then Gemini and Venus. So we have a stellium in Gemini then with uh, Mercury, with Sun, Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter all in Gemini. So uh, it'll be super, super Gemini time, a lot of fun uh, during early June. And the new moon in Gemini is June 6th. So a great time to just connect with others and just to get a lot of stuff done, do writing, do speaking, make videos, et cetera. June 8th, uh, Mars enters Taurus. So we're going to be really feeling 
very grounded but stubborn uh, when Mars is in Taurus. Sun and Gemini squares Saturn and Pisces. Uh, we can be trying to do too much at once, trying to get too many things done at once. Mar uh, June eleventh, Mars uh, in Taurus squares Pluto and Aquarius. We could be feeling very stubborn or stuck in some ways. Uh, June fourteenth, Sun and Gemini conjunct Mercury and Gemini. We're going to be feeling really chatty and talkative, wanting to get out there and have fun. June sixteenth, Venus enters Cancer. So when Venus enters Cancer, all of a sudden we get very emotional, introverted. We kind of shell up. Um, June sixteenth, also uh, Venus uh, as it is entering. Uh, that should say Venus and Cancer, but uh, as it is entering Cancer, uh, it's squaring Neptune and Pisces, which is very emotional, raw, kind of, you know, maybe getting um, emotional or sad about relationships from the past. June 17th, Mercury enters Cancer. So also, you know, as we prepare for the sun entering Cancer, we're going to be feeling more introverted and more emotional. Um, and as it enters Cancer, it uh, is conjuncting Venus, which has just entered Cancer as well. Okay, now, uh, June 20th, we have the summer solstice, Lytha. Um, and uh, the sun, uh, as it enters Cancer, is going to be squaring Neptune, making it a very spiritual time during the eighth, eight threshold festivals when the wheel turns uh, throughout the year. So uh, the, each of the solstices and the equinoxes and also the halfway points between the solstices and the equinoxes, we uh, feel we, we feel an opening to the spirit world. So join in ascending as one. So you can join in on the um, summer solstice group activation there as well. Full moon in Capricorn on uh, June 21st. We really want to balance the masculine and the feminine aspects within. June 21st as well, Mercury and Cancer sextiles Mars in Taurus. We might have difficult conversations with others around that time. Full moon in Capricorn, June 21st. We're really going to be wanting to balance the masculine and the feminine, the yin and the yang. June 26th, Mercury and Cancer, sextile Saturn and Pisces. Very emotional time, maybe getting nostalgic about the past or grieving. June 28th, Venus and Cancer, sextiles Mars in Taurus. We're going to be feeling very caring and nurturing and wanting to be nurtured by others, wanting to spend time in nature, especially around water, go to the beach, swim in a river, etc. Um, Saturn retrograde, June 29th. So the whole month of June, Saturn will be slowing down, but around mid-June to uh, mid-July, that'll be when Saturn is most exalted as its stations retrograde. So as the Pisces energy really gets enhanced, a lot of people are going to be going on uh, having intense spiritual awakenings. It's a good time in the middle of the year. Go on a spiritual retreat. Come, You can come to my uh, retreats. We have one in Mount Shasta in May and one in... Uh, New York State in September. Go on an ayahuasca journey. Go on some sort of trip that you know is really helping you get in touch with your spirituality on a much deeper level. It's a very psychic, intuitive, and creative time. And it's a time when we're really going to have the op opportunity to alchemize stuff from past lives. June 29th, Mercury and Cancer sextiling Uranus and Taurus. We're going to want to think outside the box, um, but really feel through life rather than uh, think through life. July 2nd, Neptune stations retrograde in Pisces. Okay. So Neptune is super exalted around this time as well from around mid June to mid July, along with Saturn. So, it, you know, it's just such a creative time and it's such a spiritual time, but also could be a very fanatical time on the planet. Like we talked about with uh, Saturn and Neptune and Pisces, um, really amplifying the energy of fanaticism on the planet and which can, you know, evoke violence and this violence could be domestic as well we could see riots in the united states around some sort of very important issue july 2nd mercury and cancer trines neptune in pisces as well which is a very um nice flowy romantic and uh creative type energy mercury enters leo on july 2nd so we're going to want to start to really express ourselves and again that could be a time when there's protests and riots around some issue or issues going on here in the U.S. or around the world. Uh, also that day, Venus and Cancer trines Saturn and Pisces, which is a very relationship-oriented, long-term relationship-oriented, um, romantic-type energy. July 3rd, Mercury in Leo opposes Pluto in Aquarius, where people are going to be feeling really rebellious. Again, that sort of um, 
protesting, you know, it's a similar energy to what we saw during the summer of 2020. July 5th, Mars and Taurus sextile Saturn in Pisces. That's a very good time to connect with the Earth. July 5th, new moon in Cancer. We're feeling very emotional, wanting to be, wanting to really interact with the feminine aspects of life, the yin energy, um, be around family, nest, be at home. July 8th, Venus and Cancer sextiles Uranus in Taurus. Um, this really kind of safe and cocooning feminine womb type energy we're feeling. Also that day, Mercury and Leo sex house, Jupiter and Gemini. That's a very, that's, that's interesting because that's very uh, much the opposite. That's expressive, wanting to get out and show ourselves to the world type energy. July 10th, Sun in Cancer trines Saturn in Pisces. Really, really creative, creative solutions and spiritual type energy. July 11th, Venus in Cancer trines Neptune in Pisces. Ditto for that. Um, Venus enters Leo on the 11th as well. So that trine is uh, when Venus is transiting from can Cancer to Leo. So all of a sudden with Venus and Leo, we get from being very introverted to being now very extroverted again. And it's a very flirty, romantic time. Great time to meet new people or a great time to just have fun in your existing relationship. July 12th, Venus and Leo opposes Pluto in Aquarius. So it's this also, so it's again, it's this like revolutionary, like standing up for what you believe in and not caring what other people think uh, type energy. July 15th, Mars and Uranus conjunct in Taurus. And that can be a very fortunate time. July 18th, Sun and Cancer sexiling Uranus and Taurus. Um, really, you know, kind of really creative, but also really creative time great time to innovate around your home especially july 20th mars and taurus sextiles neptune in pisces great time to connect with nature and always july 20th mars enters gemini and we then want to start to get every, all sorts of stuff done and get back out there in the world after an introverted sort of uh, june and early july and july 21st we have a second consecutive full moon in capricorn um, so a lot of Capricorn energy in 2024, which is about building. So we're really feeling like we want to build and create something for the long term. Uh, July 21st, also Venus in Leo sextiling Jupiter in Gemini. Very outgoing, fun, party type energy. July 21st, Mercury and Leo squaring Uranus and Taurus. Really, you know, expressing ourselves. People can be arrogant and egotistical. July 21st, Sun trines Neptune. Um you know, we're going to feel very emotional and uh, wanting to uh, be gentle and nurturing with others. And also it's a very spiritual energy. July 21st as well, a lot of asp aspects on that Capricorn full moon. Mars and Gemini trines Pluto in Aquarius, uh, where we're really going to want to connect with others and be in groups. Sun enters Leo. Leo season begins the day after that uh, second Capricorn full moon. Leo season is my favorite time of the year. It's when people just want to have fun, enjoy life, and connect with one another. July 22nd, the sun in Leo opposes Pluto in, in Aquarius. July 22nd, the sun opposes Pluto in Aquarius. So we're trying to find this, uh, this balance between, you know, being ourselves authentically and also, you know, how do we, um, how do we connect with others and how do we make things fair for others as well and work together in groups? July 25th, Mercury enters Virgo, and we really want to be very detailed and practical in our speech and communication. We can get obsessive in our mind. Also that day, the Sun and Leo sextiles Mars and Gemini, and we really want to, again, be very social and creative. Chiron stations July 26th in Aries, and we're feeling the Chiron energy very strongly. And as we do, um, we really want to transform our wounds, which we may feel strongly because of Chiron and Aries. And Chiron's been in Aries for a while. It's a nine-year transit. Um, but we're going to feel like we want to transmute that pain around our wounds into our higher purpose. August 2nd, Venus and Leo squares Uranus and Taurus could be things like affairs and cheating or just having a lot of fun, you know, with your partner. August 4th, Venus enters Virgo. And all of a sudden, we get very kind of meticulous around our romantic relationships. We curb our spending and we're more practical uh, with our finances. Uh, Mercury, okay, the next Mercury retrograde now will occur in Virgo. So it stations retrograde on August 4th. So between around July uh, 
July 27th, July 28th, and August 11th were really in that first amplified Mercury uh, Mercury retrograde phase. And that coincides with a new moon in Leo, which is such a great energy because uh, everyone is just super extroverted and just wants to be around other people. It's a very warm energy. August 7th, the sun in Leo, sextiles Jupiter and Gemini, again, a very warm, friendly energy. And Mercury uh, retrograde in Virgo conjuncts Venus in Virgo, which can be very meticulous and picky and a lot of communication issues. August 14th, Mars and J uh, Jupiter conjunct in Gemini, very like active communication type thing. There's gonna be a lot of communication and electronic problems uh, within that Mercury retrograde. And uh, the Mercury retrograde, the retrograde Mercury then re-enters Leo on August 14th. Then, then it, people's egos will really be coming out to play and uh, be a lot of drama and arrogance around. August 15th, Mars and Gemini squares Saturn and Pisces. People are going to get triggered over little things. August 18th, Mercury and Leo squares Uranus and Taurus. And uh, I, I did a, like lots of communication issues between people. Sun and Leo con and Sun and Mercury are conjunct in Leo squaring Uranus for that. Uh, all same day, Venus and Virgo. Um, and this is right on the full moon in Aquarius, by the way, the day before. So eight, the 18th as well, Venus uh, in Virgo squaring Jupiter and Gemini can have trouble figuring out who do we want to be with, you know, in, in romance, uh, especially with it being a retrograde. A lot of people will be reconnecting with their ex-partners. August 19th uh, is the day of the full moon in Aquarius. And the full moon in Aquarius is about putting our egos aside. You know, Leo and Aquarius season, we're trying to balance uh, ego and our own personalities and uniqueness. And with after the full moon in Aquarius, we really want to try to put our egos aside and integrate with community. And on that full moon, also uh, Venus and Virgo will be opposing Saturn and Pisces and squaring Jupiter in Gemini. So that's a, a, a tough T-square. Um, where we're going to be really feeling a lot of tension potentially in relationships. So August is potentially a very difficult time for communication with others and relationships in general, and just a lot of arrogance around. Um, sun enters Virgo on August 22nd. And when the sun enters Virgo, we're getting ready to transition from summer to autumn. Uh, it's a mutable earth sign. And we really want to get detailed and practical about life and really connect with nature a lot. Um, Venus in Virgo squares Mars in Gemini. So we can, again, be having tension in romantic relationships. Uh, August 23rd, Mercury in Leo sextiles Mar Mars in Gemini, where like, people want to just be fun and be free and party. It's not a good like long-term relationship energy. August 27th, Venus in Virgo trines Uranus and Taurus. Uh, we can have good fortune or at least focus practically on money and financial issues. August 28th, Venus in Virgo opposes Neptune in Pisces. So we're really trying to rein in and under, get an, a, a solid understanding and a practical um, grasp on our relationships. August 28th, Mercury uh, stations direct in Leo. So that second um, most amplified phase of Mercury retrograde is going to be August 21st through around September 3rd or 4th. And Venus enters Libra the day after. So when Venus enters Libra, it's all of a sudden a very partnership. It moves from that kind of single ready to mingle energy to very partnership oriented energy um, starting on August 29th. And we really want to focus on, you know, finding balance or finding our partnership. And also, you know, what is fair uh, for, the, for the world? What is fair and just? And uh, with Venus and Libra, Upon entrance, trining Pluto and Aquarius, you know, a lot of people could be um, a lot of couples, maybe they met when, you know, the energy was more single, ready to mingle, you know, in, in, in earlier in August, but a lot of spiritual couples will actually be coming together. September 1st, really one of the days to pay attention to Pluto and Uranus, both uh, have major transits, Uranus stations retrograde in Taurus. So Uranus will be super exalted again from about mid-August to mid-September. And Pluto will be very exalted as it re-enters Capricorn. Now, remember I said beginning of the year, when Uranus goes direct into Taurus, maybe that's when we start to see a downturn in the stock market. Maybe it, you know that starts to lead us into some sort of recession in 2024. We could kind of 
actually, you know, poke our heads economically out of the water um, when Uranus goes retrograde again and when Pluto reenters Capricorn. Because think about Pl the end of Pluto's transit in Capricorn was that insane uh, parabolic surge in the stock market and in the crypto market that was just this like stupid wealth being made by rich people, right? And we could see a bit of a retreat or return. I would imagine as far as the markets go, probably the beginning, very beginning of the year will be pretty good. And then the middle part of the year will probably not be good at all. And that could be uh, an actual uh, potentially heading into a recession. And then we may, as we come up towards the election, and as Pluto re-enters cap, we could see kind of a mini, mini reversal of any sort of recessionary markers. And also September 2nd, we see, see a new moon in Virgo. So when we have a new moon in Virgo, after that, again, we're very detail-oriented, um, very detail-oriented, but we can get a bit obsessive if we're not careful. Also on that day, Mars and Gemini squares Neptune in Pisces. And that's a really fun, playful kind of fantasy world energy. September 4th, Mars enters Cancer. So Mars uh, is leaving fun Gemini and going back into more introverted Cancer. Mercury and Leo squares Uranus and Taurus on the 7th. And we may be feeling blocked in what we're trying to accomplish. September 7th, Sun in Virgo opposes Saturn in Pisces. Uh, and we're going to try to be balancing logic and intuition. September 8th, Mercury enters Virgo. And again, this Virgo in energy of being very detailed, focusing on the body, being practical, uh, really amplifies. September September 11th, uh, Mercury in Virgo sextiles Mars in Cancer. Um, good time to have very honest uh, conversations about things. September 12th, Sun in Virgo squares Jupiter in Gemini. Um, we can be trying to do too many things at once here, and we really need to focus ourselves. September 14th, Venus and Libra trines Jupiter in Gemini. And it's a very harmonious social vibe there. September 17th, the full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. So this is our second eclipse season of 2024. And this is when we're entering into the Pisces Virgo axis. So this is a big shift. So 2024 is this blend, although the North Node is in Aries for the entire year. As far as the eclipses go, it's a blend between the Aries Libra polarity, which, which is about harmonizing relationships, but also finding our individuality on a world scale. It's about war and conflict and, you know, sticking up for one's nation or one's ethnic group or whatever one uh, truly, you know, whatever one believes in um, versus what is fair and just for the world. And also, you know, it's very hot time on the planet. The weather on, on uh, planet Earth has been hotter than ever since, you know, climate change really took off. Uh, with this uh, North Zone and Aries uh, season. So we're going to see this blending, though, between that and also Pisces Virgo. And Pisces Virgo, on an individual level, is going to be about finding our spirituality and integrating it into our everyday life. On a world scale, it's going to be about finding solutions that are going to work for the world. And it's also going to be about communication and freedom of speech versus restriction. And that'll be a theme, a big theme into 2025. So September 17th is a full moon lunar eclipse in Pisces. September 18th, Mercury and Virgo opposes Saturn in Pisces. So, so again, really trying to find a balance between that uh, logic and intuition. September 19th, the sun and Virgo trines Uranus and Taurus. Feeling very earthy and wanting to connect with the Earth uh, as we move towards Mabin and uh, the equinox. September uh, 20th, sun and Virgo opposes Neptune and Pisces. We can be feeling very dreamy. Uh, September 21st, Sun and Virgo trines Pluto in Capricorn. You're going to be feeling very empowered. Uh, September 22nd is the Sun entering Libra, full moon, uh, or, sorry, uh, Mabin and uh, the Autumn Equinox. Try to be on Ascending as One if you can for that. Uh, and again, I'll tell you all about Ascending as One at the end of this uh, talk. Uh, on that day as well, Venus and Libra squares uh, Pluto in Capricorn. We can have trouble in partnerships, especially if one partner is like trying to, you know, take power when they they really don't need to over the other partner venus enters scorpio september 22nd so we're feeling really emotional and passionate romantic sexual it's a very passionate time in relationships 
September 24th, Mercury in Virgo trines Uranus in Taurus. So very, you know, good fortune for um, practical matters, career matters. Uh, Mercury opposes Neptune in Pisces, again, trying to find that balance between logic and intuition, logic, intuition, logic, creativity, left and right brain. Uh, it also trines uh, Pluto and Capricorn as well, which is good for career stuff, um, especially for long-term uh, career stuff. Mercury enters Libra and, on this 26th and, you know, really want to, uh, you know, fight for and, and speak out about what is fair and just. September 29th, Mars and Cancer trine Saturn in Pisces. Um, we're feeling very nurturing of others. September 30th, Sun and Mercury conjunct in Libra, really amplifying the Libra energies. October 2nd, New Moon solar eclipse in Libra. So we go back to the Libra South Node, and we are still working on relationships. A lot of relationships could end, um, to be quite honest, around that second, uh, uh, around that second eclipse season of the year. October 4th, Venus and Scorpio trine Saturn and Pisces really wanting to connect with the other side. October 5th, Mercury and Libra squares Mars and Cancer. It can be feeling emotionally triggered. October 8th, Venus and Scorpio trines Mars and Cancer, um, feeling very emotional and real and raw. Same day, Mercury and Libra trines Jupiter and Gemini. Um, we're wanting to really um, be around other people and just get a sense of, you know, everyone working together uh, um, and getting along. October 9th, Jupiter uh, stations retrograde in Gemini. Okay, so Jupiter will be super amplified. And as I said, Jupiter was in Gemini in 1776. And it's so interesting how Jupiter will be in Gemini and um, it will be retrograde and it will be uh, exalted, you know, right on, on the US presidential election for 2024. A lot of people, I think, on the far right are going to really get crazy and be super on the far right. I will give you my election prediction, which I would bet an exorbitant sum of money on if I was a gambling man, but I'm not um, in just a moment. So stay tuned for that. And write in the comment section below, who do you, who do you think is going to win the 2024 election? So uh, Jupiter will be super exalted in Gemini from mid September through, uh, around the end of October. And Pluto is also um, very amplified around the election as well as Pluto goes direct in Capricorn on October 11th. And it will get ready to re-enter Aquarius, but it's very exalted as it stations direct. What happened last time Pluto stationed in October? That was October 7th, 2023. That was when Hamas attacked Israel and began that whole problem. So, you know, it could be a really... Uh, difficult time again uh somewhere on the planet or everywhere on the planet when pluto um does station uh direct in uh, capricorn on october 11 2024 october 13th mercury enters scorpio this will be right before the election people are gonna be really passionate about who which candidate they believe in or who they don't want to be elected <laughs> A lot of people's cases. Okay, October 14th, the uh, Sun in Libra squares Mars in Cancer. Uh, we're going to really want to work on relation, work on our partnerships and family relationships. Same day, Venus and Scorpio poses Uranus and Taurus. Uh, we can feel this need to like have space in our uh, romantic and, and family relationships. Same day, Venus and Scorpio trines Neptune Pisces, very spiritual energy connecting with the other side as we get ready for Halloween season. Venus enters Sagittarius on October 17th. We'll be feeling romantic and adventurous. Same, and it coincides with the full moon in Aries, which is very fun and adventurous and also very passionate, again, as we're leading up to that election. October 17th as well on the full moon, Venus and Scorpio sextiles, Pluto and Capricorn. It's a very lustful type energy. October 21st, Mercury and Scorpio trine Saturn and Pisces. That's a real long-term relationship type energy. October 22nd, the sun enters Scorpio. And on that day, uh, as the sun is transiting, it squares Pluto and Capricorn. So that's really like intensity of, yeah, you know, my truth is the truth, wanting to, you know, what is the truth? Um, very interesting leading up to the election. October 24th, Mars and Cancer sextiles Uranus and Taurus. And we can be feeling um, like we really want to uh, kind of nurture and, and, and restructure the home aspect of life or 
physical home or family, etc. October 28th, Venus and Sagittarius squaring Saturn Pisces, maybe wanting to be adventurous or step outside the box in, in some way, but feeling blocked. October 30th, my birthday, Mercury and Scorpio opposes uh, Uranus and Taurus. Uh, we could be feeling uh, like we're not being heard. Halloween, uh, Mercury and Scorpio trines Neptune and Pisces, makes it uh, so in and Halloween, a very spiritual time, great time to connect with the other side. November 1st, new moon in Scorpio, right on uh, Halloween or right before the election. Feeling very spooky and spiritual and passionate. Uh, November 2nd, Mercury and Scorpio trines Mars and Cancer. People feel very emotional and passionate about what they're feeling. Again, right before the election. November 2nd, Mercury and Scorpio sextiles Pluto in Capricorn. Uh, very lustful type energy. Um, November 2nd, Mercury enters Sagittarius. People are going to be feeling really free to say whatever they want. Uh, November 3rd, Mars and Cancer poses Pluto in Capricorn. Very emotionally triggering energy. Uh, Venus and Sag on the same day opposing Jupiter in Gemini, um, a kind of, uh, you know, going overboard type energy. Mars enters Leo on November 3rd. People are going to be feeling really active and expressive. Um, November 4th, the sun in Scorpio trines a Saturn in Pisces. November 4th, the day before the presidential election, sun in Scorpio trines Saturn in Pisces. Again, a very spiritual, emotional energy. November 11th, Venus enters Capricorn and uh, we'll be feeling more reserved again in, in uh, our uh, romantic uh, endeavors and feelings uh, and also more reserved in our spending. November 12th, Mercury and Sag squares Saturn in Pisces, um, trying to find this balance between expressing ourselves and being able to see other perspectives. Saturn at that time is also very exalted as it uh, stations direct um in Pisces. So again, it could be a fanatical energy and like that's right around the election. Uh, full moon in Taurus, November 15th. Uh, we're going to be feeling very grounded and very sensual. November 16th, the sun in Scorpio opposes Uranus and Taurus. We're trying to find a balance between the spiritual and the physical. November 18th, Mercury in Sag opposes Jupiter in Gemini, maybe saying too much and getting ourselves in trouble if we're not careful. November 19th, Pluto re-enters Aquarius, and it'll now stay in Aquarius for the next 16 years. So it's it's interesting. During the election itself, we're back in Capricorn. To give you a little hint, who was the last president with Pluto in Capricorn? Wink, wink. There, you got my prediction. <laughs> okay, so yes, Biden will be re-elected. But I have many more predictions for you coming up, so stay stay tuned. November 18th, uh, the Sun and Scorpio trines Neptune in Pisces. And uh, we're feeling uh, very, again, spirit, the doors of the spirit world wide open. November 21st, uh, Sun enters Sagittarius. We enter Sagittarius season. We're feeling very optimistic and adventurous. Sun and Sag sextiles Pluto and Aquarius. We really want to, uh, you know, experience life to the fullest. November 22nd, uh, Pluto. Uh, and also, you know, we're back thinking about, you know, what is the new world that we want to create? November 22nd, Venus and Capricorn sextiles Saturn in Pisces. Uh, it's a very serious relationship type energy. November 25th, Mercury stations retrograde in Sagittarius. So November, um, from November 18th through around December uh, 3rd, that's when it's going to be most exalted this time around. Uh, and Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius, which at the time I'm recording this, you know, right before uh, the... Uh, January 1st, 2024, we're in Mercury retrograde and Sagittarius. Travel plans and, you know, travel issues are kind of the theme. Uh, November 27th, the Sun and Sag trines Mars and Leo. Very optimistic and fun and athletic uh, aspect. November 30th, new moon in Sagittarius. Uh, so with this new moon in Sag on November 30th, we are feeling um, super optimistic about life and adventurous as well. Okay, so December 2nd, Venus and Capricorn trines Uranus and Taurus. Uh, we're really, you know, wanting to, uh, we're really wanting to, you know, feel safe and and we're really wanting to feel safe and grounded in a long-term relationship. December 4th, Mercury and Sag opposes a Jupiter and Gemini. Uh, again, maybe getting ourselves in trouble with saying too much. Same day, Sun and Sag squares uh, Saturn in Pisces. Uh, this can be a very... Uh, Fan fantasy oriented and fun time in general. 
December 4th, same day, Venus and Capricorn sextiles Neptune in Pisces. Um, very romantic feeling, especially for long-term relationships. Mars goes retrograde, so it stations retrograde on December 6th. So we don't have a Mars retrograde every year. We do have one uh, 2024. So around uh, you know uh, the end of November through uh, mid-December, we're especially feeling that Mars retrograde energy around Mars' station phase. And also the day before Sun and, Sag uh, Sun and Mercury are conjunct in Sagittarius, really amplifying the adventurous, fun Sagittarius energies. When Mars uh, stations retrograde, uh, Mercury and the Sun are squaring Saturn in Pisces. Um, so that is, as I said, uh, this very uh, you know fun, creative, fantasy world type energy. Uh, December 6th, Venus enters Aquarius as well. And we really want to connect with community and do what's best for everyone. We feel very humanitarian oriented. December 7th, Venus, uh, now in Aquarius, conjuncts Pluto. And uh, we're really feeling that, like what I just said. Uh, it's December 7th as, as well, the sun opposes, uh, the sun uh, and Mercury will oppose Jupiter and Gemini. And we'll be feeling, uh, you know, maybe um, like we can, you know, again, maybe being our own worst enemy, self-sabotaging, or just doing too many things at once, or being unrealistic about things, perhaps. Uh, this, the same day, Neptune is is stationed uh, direct. So from, you know, again, the end of November to kind of the end of 2024, uh, we have a very uh, strong Neptune energy. And again, Neptune's still in Pisces. It's very spiritual, very dreamy, you know, the dream world, intuition, the spirit world, et cetera. But also, again, can be a fanatical time around the world. December 12th, Venus in Aquarius opposes Mars in Leo. And we're trying to, you know, balance working together and being with others uh, and with, you know, our own individuality. Um, same day, Mercury and Sag sextiles Venus in Aquarius. And we're feeling very, you know, oriented towards community. Full moon in Gemini on December 15th, right before uh, the holiday seasons, so we'll be feeling very much like we want to, uh, you know, connect and be with family and friends after that. Mercury station then as well in Sagittarius. So that last Mercury retrograde at the three in 2024, December 8th through 22nd is when Mercury will be, have its most influence. And it'll be a great time to reconnect with, uh, with old friends and old family. December 18th, the sun and Sag squares, Neptune and Pisces. Very fun time to be around family. Um, December 19th, Venus and Aquarius trines Jupiter in Gemini. And uh, we're going to really want to be around groups and have fun. December 21st, join us on Ascending, Ascending as One if you can for Yule, Winter Solstice, and Sun entering Capricorn. We're in we're, Capricorn season, we're in it right now. It's about the earth and being grounded and being practical and getting things done, being productive. Uh, Christmas Eve, Jupiter and Gemini squares Saturn in Pisces. Uh, a lot of fun for the holidays. People may be getting inebriated. December 26, Mercury and Sag opposes Jupiter in Gemini. Again, people may be having too much fun and getting too inebriated. Uh, and it'll also be squaring Saturn in Pisces. Ditto. December 27th, Venus and Aquarius uh, squaring Uranus and Taurus. It'll be a difficult time for romantic relationships. Chiron is also stationed then now in, in Aries once again, going direct. So people will be feeling very emotional around that time. A lot of wounds coming up. And then the final uh, you know, lunation of the year, December 30, 2024, is a new moon in Capricorn. We'll be feeling very grounded and wanting to connect with the physical world. Okay, so predictions for 2024. The presidential election, Joe Biden will be reelected. He will win by a smaller margin than in 2016, but he will win. There will be a new Canadian election that will be called, and by the end of the year, uh, Trudeau will be out. Okay, other predictions. There will be some sort of major political conflict in the country of Greece or around that area. Iran will jump into uh, a continuing war in the Middle East where Israel is fighting off a whole bunch of Arab factions, and the United States will get involved in fighting off Iran. There will be some sort of probably manufactured oil prices that will shoot uh, prices up. A recession will occur. The stock markets will turn, will finish down 10 to 15 percent, uh, at least from where they were at the end of 2023. The summer of 2024, we'll see a lot of riots in the United States around various issues, police brutality, also the very, you know, contentious election. There will be a small earthquake near Los Angeles. By the way, the um, the war in the Middle East will get a lot worse in February. There will be some sort of explosion of a, of a tanker ship or something 
that will set off a problem that but who knows it could be a false flag there will be some sort of fake extraterrestrial uh sighting like a, a project blue beam type thing it will be a very rainy summer in the u.s there will be a new leader in russia by the end of the year putin may be deceased some people think he's already deceased the paris olympics will see riots um in the streets around some sort of political issue there will be major earthquakes uh somewhere in southern europe and in mexico in the west coast of mexico of course all of these predictions are for entertainment purposes only who really knows but I want to hear from you. You tell me your predictions for 2024. Let's compare. Comment uh, below, please. Let's pull a tarot card for 2024. What will the overall energy of 2024 be? What will the overall energy of 2024 be? The Magician Reverse. The magician reverse for 2024 misuse of power around the world right lots of conflict dictators things like that another prediction that comes to mind is uh, north korea becoming a bigger problem doing more you know test missiles and things like that and just for fun uh, let me pull a galactic heritage card from this deck what will be the main theme of 2024? Mm, light of awareness. So from a spiritual standpoint, the world is waking up on a grand scale in 2024. So the tyranny, the tyranny, that's the word I was looking for that we see with the magician card reversed, getting worse around the world, right? is bringing forth this light of awareness. Now, if you are an astrology enthusiast like myself, I highly recommend this uh, complete astrology at a glance, Lewin's daily guide. Um, so it'll show you, you know, it, the transits for each day. And by the way, that uh, page, which is linked in the description box below, if you notice, I wasn't reading at all from what they wrote. I don't really vibe with what that page that site writes as far as the horoscopes for those um, aspects. I, you know, go off my own intuition and knowledge. So I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock into um, the, uh, into their descriptions, but um, astrology is interpretive by design. So every astrologer will have a different interpretation of all these aspects, but um, just an FYI with that. But this is a great guide. Uh, the link is in the uh, description box below to purchase off Amazon. Um, so I'm going to get into a trance and I will be channeling through a group of five Syrian extraterrestrial beings that I connect with and channel through at least once a month. They're very wise. They're very fun. They're uh, kind of funny as well. They're very humorous. Um, and uh, I'm going to ask them today, especially about just what we should expect for 2024 and any advice that they have on uh, for us on having a great 2024. Greetings, dear ones. Oh, how we have missed you. It feels like it has been forever since we have connected with your group. <laughs> we, we kid, we know it has not been that long and we see that many of you are seeing us for the first time meeting with us for the first time, and we very much appreciate your presence. Someday on your planet and someday sooner than you might even imagine is possible, you will look back in your cultural experiences, in your music, in your theater, in your family stories, in your literature, in all of it, in your arts, and reflect upon the journey you took as a planet from a planet of stark duality, of violence and war and pollution and ill health to a planet of equality and joy, gratitude, abundance, cleanliness, purity. That is what you, many of you may call the new earth. And this is what we see for you, dear humans. And we 
always are intending that you are able to access this truth that this is where you are headed as a planet. It is not just us, dear humans. It is many of us extraterrestrials, as you would call us, that are giving you reminders as individuals and as groups and collectives of your intended destiny as a collective on your planet. And that your intended arrival is an inevitable occurrence. It is simply a matter of when and how and what the journey between where you are now as a collective and where you will be arriving to looks like, how long it takes, and what it's, what your personal experience of it will be. But your evolution as a planet and your arrival into your golden age is inevitable. We hear our channel reminding us of 2024 and wanting our take on 2024. We see 2024 being, <laughs> if you, we may say, dear, dear humans, dear friends, if you thought 2023 was wild on your planet, just wait for 2024. <laughs> there will be many difficult occurrences, many difficult scenes to see on the news. We look to the month of February for tragedy to occur on your planet. Most of you will not be in the path of this tragedy, but all of you will be affected in one way or another. After that, your planet will have dove much deeper into what you may call a dark night of the soul. For those of you that are unaffected by what is to come in 2024, it is your souls that are intending to lift you vibrationally even quicker for most of you than in 2021, 2022, or 2023. And for those of you that are in parts of the world that are very much affected by the intended events of 2024, your souls will be going through the exact experiences that they are meant to have. For those of you that are earmarked, you might say, to experience a deepening of your service mission during 2024, many of you will be led to different parts of the planets. We are so thrilled that your channel has scheduled to appear in different parts of the planet that are of great importance in 2024 and in 2025. We encourage all of you to travel to those stargates and those chakras and those grid point intersections on your planet during 2024 and 2025 in order to continue to activate the stargates and the grids. Those of you that are meant to remain on the new earth and to impart your service mission onto the earth and into the collective grids will remain safe despite the tragedies and calamities that may be ahead for your planet in 2024 and 2025. Those of you that are meant for specific missions will be provided with the financial means to complete such missions. Expect financial miracles for many of you. For those of you that are meant to go through experiences of the physical restructuring of your, of your body in preparation for the energetic ascension, you may experience bouts of illness over the next several years. We might remind you that every time your body experiences some sort of illness, it is much deeper, the meaning is much deeper than simply the bacteria or virus that is causing it. On a deeper underneath that, there is an energetic evolution. There's an energetic shift going on and karma is being cleared from your energy field. Webs of information and codes that you have carried with you into this lifetime are being released from your energy field. The more releasing work that you do, dear friends, as we may give you an important piece of advice here, the less your body may need to experience illness or rest or even experiences of trauma or tragedy as you will be doing the work consciously yourself. But for many of you light workers that uh, have chosen specific service missions one way or another, because your mission is so crucial, you'll be forced to face any of the energetic webs and the codes 
of other of karma, negative karma, you might say, from other lifetimes that you've carried with you into this. We do not mean to impart any fear upon you, dear ones, even when we mention specific months of the year, like February. We hear our channel reminding us, you, that we had spoken about October earlier in 2023. October has come and gone, and all of you here are still safe. February will come and go, and all of you that are here will be safe. What you see going on in the world, though, may not always be pleasant. And we will remind you that if it, paying attention to what occurs in the world is something that lowers your vibrational frequency, to pay less attention to it. And if it is something that uplifts your frequency that you see going on in the world, to pay more attention to it. If you can see anything going on in the world from a neutral state of mind or state of being, that is ideal. As even oscillating back and forth between the positive and the negative is still keeping you in a polarity consciousness. And ultimately, as you ascend in frequency from your third density to the fourth, which is the next step in the, in the evolutionary scale of densities for you, dear ones, that you do need to come back to a center, you might say, and to be able to experience life in a non-dual fashion. For those of you that are going to be protected and in safety over the next couple of years as your planet goes through many shifts, both in the geography and the climate and in the economy, it is those of you that are meant to be safe and protected, those of you that are meant to be safe and protected, Many of the lessons come, that come through seeing and experiencing what is in the outside world is meant to bring you back to that centeredness that is the opposite of polarity consciousness. You are meant to not oscillate so much back and forth anymore. You are meant to simply experience life from a neutral point of view. All that happens is all that is meant to happen. All is well all the time. There is no good or bad. There are no right or wrong decisions. There are no right or wrong things. There is no good or bad energy. Everything simply is. And you will find the more you are able to return to that centeredness of non-duality of all simply is, you will find the irony, perhaps, that life becomes more and more pleasurable. If anything tragic or difficult were to happen for us on our planets, we would honor the emotions of it, we would grieve, and we would return quickly back to a centeredness of understanding, knowing from the depths of ourselves that what happens or what is happening is exactly what was meant to happen or is meant to happen. We wish all that are watching and are with us the most wonderful blessings for the year ahead. And we wish you the best of fortune, the best of times in your life over the next year and beyond. We thank you for your attention today. And we remind you that you may call upon us at any time. You do not need our channel. <laughs> we are always here and we would love to connect with you. And if you enjoy astrology, I love astrology. That's a reason to join my Ascending as One program. All the information about Ascending as One is in the description box below. But let's just briefly go over it. Then I'll guide you into my 2024 highest timeline activation. Okay, so Ascending as One is my signature group mentorship program. Uh, we meet almost every Sunday. It's a lot. These are live calls from 4 to 7 p.m. Eastern time via Zoom. You also get the link to download and stream the recordings and the link to download the notes as well. And we're doing a different teaching each week to assist you in healing and self-development to accelerate your ascension. That's why it's called Ascending as One. Group healing meditations, group EFT tapping each week, weekly astrology updates, live readings on each call, Q&A on each call, all topics open, downloadable notes after each call, and includes my acclaimed webinars and courses due on the site, a Telegram group to connect with other students 24-7, free merch, discounts on full-length private sessions, and no commitments necessary. You can do it for one month, three months, six months, whatever you want. Okay, uh, tier two gets you three three-hour group calls per month, plus one free course to do on the side and some discounts off of my 
uh, full-length private sessions, retreats, and other uh, programs. And VIP gets you four group calls to do, uh, per month, including the bonus fourth call with the Syrian channeling. And you got to see what the Syrians had to say about 2024 in this. So if you want to join the Syrian calls live and ask the Syrians your questions, you get the opportunity to do that once a month on Ascending as one. Oh, with VIP, you also get three free courses to do on the side and a 20-minute private reading with me every month that you're enrolled where you can ask me literally everything. And so here's some sample questions. Am I a star seed? What is my purpose in life? Should I move? Should I change jobs? What is my outlook from Spear for the next month, for the next year? Great time to join Ascending as one VIP now. You'll get yourself a reading in January, and I'll do an overview, if you'd like, for what your 2024 is going to look like based on astrology, based on tarot, based on my own intuition and clairvoyance. It, you also get merchandise with VIP and big discounts on my other stuff. So all the prices are here on this page, and it's also in the description box below. Go to this page on my website, youaredivinehuman.org slash events, or just go to youaredivinehuman.org or go to the description box below, click the link, go to the courses, events, and retreats page, and you'll see all the information on Ascending as One. January schedule, January 7th, stepping into your highest vibration for 2024. So in a minute, you're going to get to do the highest timeline activation. If you like it, which I know you will, and you find it to be powerful and influential, Wait till you see what we do on January 7th. We are going to take that and expand it and go way further than we did here. And you're, if you do both, you're going to set yourself up for an incredible 2024 because you're going to be on that highest possible personal timeline. And regardless of what's going on in the world, there's a variance in timelines of what we can experience. We might find ourselves getting caught up in all of the anxieties and the, uh, the problems and the injustices in the outside world. And we might find ourselves getting pulled into it. And we might find ourselves being a victim in one way or in, in certain ways in life. While on our highest timelines, we are co-creators and we're creating the lives that are uh, the highest possibilities for us from a place of personal power. And so it's so important to be on that highest timeline. So you can, there's so much, there are so many amazing things that are available to you that can happen for you in 2024. It's just a matter of being on the highest timeline. So make sure you join Ascending as One for January and you do the uh, the timeline activation we're going to finish off with in this, uh, in this video. But if you do both, it's just going to amplify things so much. And we're doing it together as a group on January 7th. And when we do any sort of ritual as a group, it just amplifies it to the nth degree. So January 7, 2024, stepping into your highest vibration for 2024. January 14th, healing your solar plexus chakra. January 21st, sacred geometry 101. And January 28th, rune casting and the Syrian channeling segment. Every as ascending as one call starts with a 45 minute to one hour astrology segment where I go over the macro astrology like I did in, in this video, but I condense it and make it relevant to the moment. And then I go over the micro astrology. So what's happening every single day for the day to come. You get downloadable notes with your membership so you can plan out your week because if Mercury is squaring Jupiter, you might want to be careful. You don't push things too overboard. But if Mercury and Venus or, Mar or Venus and Mars are conjunct, it might be a very good time to connect with your partner. So it helps you to plan out your week. You'll know when the moon void of course phases are. You know, you'll know all about the moon's transit. You know, what is you know, when is the moon uh, squaring, sextiling, or trining other planets? And that's the real day-to-day -day astrology. And you'll know what it means when the moon's in Gemini versus when the moon's in Taurus versus when the moon's in Aries, et cetera. So it just helps you to live life consciously when you're consciously working with the astrology. So that's really one of the best perks of joining Ascending as One is you get that weekly astrology update from me. It's like, a, it's like waving a magic wand and taking a shortcut through life when you're working with the planets rather than against them. And on the Ascending as One calls, I also do, a lot of times do readings for people looking at your natal chart. I definitely look at your natal chart when we do one-on-one -on -one private sessions. And every call, we do EFT tapping. And the tapping is such an amazing part of the Ascending as One calls because it helps to enforce, it helps to reinforce into your nervous system the teachings that we did for the day and it helps you to heal and release so much. I love tapping. I'm an EFT tapping practitioner. I teach many classes on it. We do that on every Ascending as One call. And at the end of every Ascending as One call, you get a chance to have a Q&A with me. 
ask me your questions about anything. You also get to join on in on the Telegram group, okay? Here's the Ascending as One Telegram group, you can see. And uh, it's just, it's really fun to connect with and make new friends with people from around the world that are also, you know, doing my programs and working on their own personal ascension. And we do so much grid work and, and, and visualization work as well on Ascending as One to assist the planet, to assist in the planetary uh, planetary ascension. All the information is in the description box or go to that link on my website. There's a form to fill out to sign up. I'll get right back to you and uh, send you an invoice whether you want to do one month, three months, or six months. My recommendation is to do three months. That's a, a pretty good uh, starter pack for Ascending as One. Ascending as One is uh, for January. Uh, February is an off month, and then we'll do March and April, and then we'll resume after that in June. June. So it's not every month. We're going to do seven Ascending as One months out of the 12 in 2024. All right, everyone. Now it's time to do our 2024 highest timeline activation. So let's do it. So uh, we'll start with some nice deep breathing and uh, you can close your eyes if you'd like, okay? Eyes open or closed, it's it's totally up to you. Um, and just, I like to actually put my hand right over my solar plexus, speaking of the solar plexus, and to breathe deeply into my hands. Just starting by just relaxing the nervous system, getting nice and relaxed. Focus on the root chakra, which is uh, energetic, you know, the energetic portion of you that, you know, on your body, that's the root of your spine. That's the base of your spine. So just imagine that area of your body. Imagine that there's this glowing red chakra there, okay? About this big, about six inches in diameter. See it glowing and healthy and activated and spinning. And imagine that there's a column of light. You can make it any color you'd like from that root chakra all the way down between your feet and going all the way down to the center of the earth, connecting in to the center of planet earth. And this is grounding and rooting. And also imagining that there's roots, literal tree roots, growing out of your feet and out of your toes, down into the earth below you. If you're in your home or an apartment, just imagine these tree roots growing down from your feet, all the way down, connecting into the earth. You can even see your legs themselves becoming like tree trunks. You can even see your entire self becoming like a tree now. Imagine there's kind of like two strings, one that is going down the vertical midline, so right down your spine, and one that is going uh, horizontally through your heart. And that the cross section of that vertical line and the horizontal line is your heart chakra. And this is getting you into complete balance. Imagine now there's four quadrants of you. Each quadrant is in perfect balance with one another. Imagine that you are the four directions. Your head is north. Your space, your spine is south. Your left arm is west and your right arm is east. Seeing yourself as a compass. And now putting yourself into being in perfect harmony with the four directions. And I want you to imagine that you are in a beautiful forest. It's maybe a forest that you've been to, maybe one you've been to recently, or maybe one you remember from a while back, but that this forest is a very special place. It's a very peaceful place. It's a place you know well. 
It's a place you trust and feel safe in. Imagine it's a warm, comfortable day or whatever your favorite weather is even actually is even better. Whatever your favorite weather is, is happening on this day. You can hear and feel and perceive birds around you, animals around you. You can feel the peaceful and grounding presence of the earth below you. And I'd like you to imagine a series of doors, of floating doors appearing in front of you in this forest. There might be three, there might be four, there might be five. You might even see labels on these doors. The one on the left might say something like lower or lowest timeline. The one in the middle might say most likely timeline. The one all the way to the right might say highest possible timeline. And you might be able to perceive or even get a, a, a sense or a glimpse that there's essentially wormholes or portals that are that these doorways or entrances that these doors are entrances into. And if you were to open up these doors, you'll be entering into a specific wormhole or a specific portal. And obviously the one on the left is going to be a lower frequency experience and the one all the way to the right. I want you to think before you enter into the doorway you're going to enter into, which hopefully will be the one on the right. I want you to think about some of the things that are three, four or five things that are most important for you that if they manifested in 2024 for you, you would be so thrilled. You would be so content at the end of the year, looking back if these specific things happen for you. So I want you to just think of those things for a minute. And I want you to think about why, why these things are important to you. What is it about them if they were to manifest that would be giving you something that you've either been missing or haven't fully manifested. And then I want you to think about three or four things that you know for sure are recurring obstacles or blockages for you. These could be specific fears that seem to dog you no matter what. These could be specific patterns of being a behavior that maybe you even perceive your parents have or had or maybe your grandparents had or had been passed down through the lineages, something that you just know on some level you've got to get over, but it's just always been an Achilles heel. So think about those things for a moment. What are those things for you? And just for fun, if you could take these four, these three, four, or five things, these obstacles that have been a recurring issue for you, and distill them, creatively distill them, intuitively distill them into objects, what would they look like? Maybe they don't look pleasant, right? Maybe you don't even want to hold them, and you don't have to hold them. Once you distill each of these obstacles into an object, 
I'd like you to place it on the ground in front of you. And by the way, those doorways are still just kind of floating a few feet ahead of you. So taking these obstacles, morphing them into objects, and then placing them on the ground in front of you. And if it's not a single object, maybe it's a basket of objects. And as you look at now these three, four, five, maybe for some of you, six or seven, even objects in front of you that are representing your recurring obstacles, take a moment to just feel into, is there a part of you that is either afraid to or is resisting in any way if letting go of these? And if there is a part of you I want you to just be with that part for a moment and tell that part of you it's okay. And I understand. I understand why you're afraid. I understand why you're resisting. I understand change is scary. And it's okay. We're going to be okay. I love you. Whether in your mind or out loud, speak that loving kindness to that shadow part of self that is afraid. And now we're gonna ceremoniously at the end of 2023 here, let go of these obstacles because we don't need them. And they're only going to try to push us towards those medium or, you know, most likely or lower timelines. So for some of you, you know, you might want to burn them in a fire and you can imagine you're creating a bonfire. You know, it, this is in our minds so we can do it very quickly. And we're going to just burn each of these items ceremoniously. It's something we do in, you know, magic when we do releasing ceremonies, we just burn the things for some of you, you might, prefer that there is a river beside you and you can throw these things into the river or even an ocean beside you appears or perhaps some of you would like to have your angels if you know who your specific guides and angels are maybe come and take these away for you it's up to you this is your experience this is your activation however you feel called to have these obstacles be ritualistically taken away or removed. I'm going to put mine in a fire because I'm very comfortable working with the element of fire. So, And you might feel a sense of like, whoa, that was scary, but I did it, you know, right? Like, oof, that was scary, but I did it. And now that those things are gone, maybe even you feel lighter in your body. Maybe you even feel like you're buzzing now. And you might notice that you're being drawn towards maybe even that, maybe that doorway all the way to the right is even glowing for you. It's welcoming you. And you're going to walk over to that doorway now, courageously put your hand on it, open the doorway, and you're now in a portal and as you're going through this portal, you're now going to arrive at a scene. This is a future scene of something that's going to happen in 2024, something wonderful that's going to happen in 2024. And I want you to just see yourself enjoying that scene. What does it feel like? What does it look like? What does it smell like? If you're eating food, what does it taste like? Who are the people that are there? 
take it in with all your senses and enjoy it. And I want you to uh, smile as you're seeing it and feel a sense of joy, feel a sense of worthiness that yes, this is, this is meant for me and I'm doing it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Feel that sense of gratitude for whatever you're seeing. And then another portal is opening in the scene, a doorway, and you open it and you're going to move to another scene now. Something else that happens in 2024 for you. And enjoy, embrace, and feel gratitude for this scene now. And another doorway opens. And as you get ready to step through that, it's going to bring you to another scene in three, two, one now. And you're seeing another wonderful scene of your highest timeline of 2024. And enjoy this one. And another doorway now opens and we're going to go to one more scene from 2024 as you step through in three, two, one now and arriving at another scene of a wonderful event that you're experiencing in 2024. And enjoy this one and be grateful for it. And as you step through one more portal, it's going to bring you to the end of 2024, to January 1st, 2025. In three, two, one, now. And you're seeing yourself wherever you are on January 1st, 2025. And you're looking back at what a wonderful, incredible, expansive year it was for you. All the amazing things you just saw and so many more that you didn't see yet. And I'd like you to imagine that as you turn one way or, or another, there's a guide sitting next to you. Maybe it's an archangel, maybe it's a loved one from the other side. Maybe it's a guide that you know, or maybe even a new guide. And I want you to ask this guide, or maybe they're already gonna tell you, what advice do you have for me on being in my highest timeline for 2024? And pay attention to any words, feelings, visions, et cetera. Now I want you to imagine that you're going to bottle up all of these wonderful visions and good energy that you saw during this into a ball of energy that's about this big, about six inches in diameter. Okay, make it into a ball of energy, all these wonderful visions of all the things you saw. Put them in there. Make it even brighter. Make it glow with golden energy. And I want you to make seven copies now and place each, one of each into each of your seven chakras, starting with the crown and on down. One in the crown, one in the third eye, one in the, in the throat, one in the heart, one in the solar plexus, one in the sacral, and one in the root. And now I want you to see as far, far above you as you could possibly imagine this source, this unlimited source of golden light, of golden energy. 
and it channels down into a column of light coming all the way down into your crown through all seven of your main chakras down through the black earth star chakra which is about a foot and a half below your feet and all the way down to the center of the earth and both your grounding cord which we created before and this golden stream of light are intertwined and now see from your heart this golden energy flow out to cover your entire auric field to cover six feet all around you feel yourself in the embossed in this golden energy of abundance you're feeling golden yourself it's almost as if your skin and all your organs and your hair and everything is turned to gold And as you once again see these tree roots from the bottoms of your feet and your toes connecting down into the earth, see your, your uh, legs and your torso, again, seeing yourself turn into this very stable, very peaceful, very joyful tree. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this. Again, please comment below, what are you feeling for 2024? And let me know if you appreciated this overview and any questions you might have. I will answer every question that's in the uh, in the comment section below. Thank you so much. Uh, also go to my website for everything else that I offer. We have two retreats upcoming in 2024, Mount Shasta in May and Light on the Hill in New York in September and all my other classes, programs, events, et cetera. There's so many free resources as well, not just here on my YouTube channel, but also on my website. Again, that's youareadivinehuman.org or just go to the description box below. And also make sure you subscribe to the Higher Self channel. That's where I post my new and full moon podcast every new and full moon. So I uh, will see you over there in the Higher Self channel for our upcoming new moon in Capricorn. All right, everyone, wishing you the most wonderful, prosperous, abundant, successful, and joyful 2024 from my heart to yours. And please always remember to be kind to yourself, to be kind to others, to be kind to animals, and to be kind to the earth. With love, this is Matthew Jones.